Hey guys. <coughs> hey Adam. Hi Christopher. How, how are you doing? I am well. Good. You prep? We're going to the UK drum show this week. You prepped? Mm, yes. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> the press sh- answer is yes. The, the real answer, answer is, is yes. I'm tearing my hair out a wee bit, <laughs> but it's fine. Well, I, you're doing leads like for two days as well, aren't yeah, you? Yeah. So I'm doing leads. When's this coming out? Uh, this is coming out in a like week or two, two weeks. A week or two. Yeah. Weeks. So this is the weekend prior to the UK drum show. Yes. To set the, the scene for you. Yeah, the UK drum show will have passed. Yes. By the time this comes out, I will probably have no hair. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, so um, I'm in the bits of tearing it out right now. Yeah, but so it's going well. Yeah. Good, good. Um, Are you prepared? I am prepared. I can't wait. Very excited. Good. Very excited. Uh, do you know what else is exciting? What is very exciting? Craig Neal's in the house. Oh, Craig Hello. Neal's in the house. Hello, guys. Hi, Craig. <laughs> Hi. How, How are you doing, doing, man? Very well. Good. Yeah, very well. Good, good, good. It's been a while since I've seen you. Yes. Like properly. Yeah, I yeah. I think yeah. The, one of the last times I saw you was at the UK drum show. Yeah, and I'm going again. Are you going with, Yeah, yeah. Oh, yes. I'm going with, going with Gretsch again on Saturday. Oh, amazing. Yeah, so. Great. I did not know that. That's yeah. great. So, um, there'll be listeners of this that, uh, that don't know who you are. So, sure, sure. do you want to introduce yourself? Uh, yeah. I, uh, my name's Craig. Uh, Craig Neal. And I play drums in Twin Atlantic. Twin Atlantic, man. Yes. I don't, it, it's funny. I, I was thinking about this a lot. Uh, just to... You embarrass you. We had Vivarium on in the car today. Oh, yeah. I was like, it's 10 years. 10 years, I know. I That's was, amazing. It made me feel very old. But I, I, <laughs> very, very I old. remember when the shop was further up the street mm-hmm. and you used to bring all your broken cylinders back. <laughs> yeah. Because uh, that must have been what, 07? Oh nine, but I'd have well, probably, I'd, I'd probably been bringing this, I'd have been I, bringing the symbols prior to that as yeah, well. So, yeah, because you were making like great name for yourself right mm-hmm. about that time and before the album just came in, out just in Glasgow pretty much yeah that was a bit we'd have been doing well in Glasgow and nowhere else I think we I don't <laughs> think until like maybe a year after the video came out I think we played to like zero people in England so I think oh, it was going well in Scotland <laughs> brilliant well it's just I mean to me it just shows that you guys have had an amazing tenacity like driving up and down the country in a van basically Yes, is that a, lot, how it went? a lot. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. What mm. was it? What was like the early days of, of Twin like? Uh, kind of that. Yeah. Well, we we do you know is we'd all played in kind of other local Glasgow bands and just knew each other from playing gigs and stuff like that. And I think we kind of started to suss out that we were the people in our bands mm-hmm. that were like taking it seriously. Mm-hmm. And it's really hard to find a band of like four or three or four individuals. Uh, who all have the same like commitment and passion yeah. to it, and mm-hmm. I, we were kind of all in bands where the other guys maybe had like uni or girlfriends and things like yeah. that. They would they would kind of like or jobs, so they wouldn't kind of be able to, <laughs> <laughs> to, to to like money. Yeah, yeah, I know. I imagine having to worry about that. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, so, so we uh, we just basically came like we're like, oh well, I want to take a band seriously. Sam and Ross and Barry really did, so we kind of just we like. From like day one, we like started practicing like five times a week. Yeah, and, uh, that was what I noticed when you would come in, just focus. Yeah, yeah. Like really driven, like like this is pretty much all I'm going to do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And we I are. don't think there's many bands doing it now like that. Really? No, we were lucky that we had like, we, like my parents just let us have their like the garage in their house to, so we like just like yeah. abused it and yeah. they weren't there during the day so we I bet your yeah. neighbours loved you though yeah <laughs> like, they, oh, they, yeah, they, they really did not <laughs> no I don't think I don't they've never asked me <laughs> <laughs> just like proper garage band from, from proper garage band yeah, to, yeah, yeah. to stadium band yeah yeah like yeah like uh, I know it's like a been like feels like a, a long journey since we are in like Ten years. Yeah, yeah. Ten fifty. Well, I mean, you, I, God, um, if you count it, it's probably the same length of time as the shop's been on the go. We've uh, pretty been much identical. Years, yeah, yeah. Fourteen years like, in May. So yeah, we did. Uh, we did. Just we were right after that, like maybe six months of the shop opening. Wow, that's, that's amazing, amazing, man. Nuts. Yeah, that's yeah. Amazing. And I, uh, you got to do like, some of the things you guys have done. Like I remember seeing you support the Pumpkins. That was at the that SEC. was yeah. That was like really early on. We got just lucky because we'd done. The Aerogram farewell show oh, okay. at the we kind of filled in last minute and from that got a, like a bunch of stuff yeah, from the Jimmy picked you guys out or something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just yeah. like was, that's yeah. actual fanboy part for me. Uh, yeah, Jimmy yeah. Chamberlain's biggest fan. I, I mean, same. I never got to meet him unfortunately, but uh, I was the same. I was like, yeah. I still, you, I still. You guys that. rocked it that night as well. It was you, brilliant. I, I, it was good. You know, we were kind of a bit overwhelmed because we were like, we'd never done. I think at that point we'd done a tour with Biffy, mm. but. 
it wasn't it was at the point Biffy weren't at arenas yet, so it was right. so it was just kinda like two thousand folk and then that was like way bigger obviously. So, so did you guys come out just after Biffy? No, they'd been they were maybe I think when we supported them they were on the puzzle tour, so they were oh, like, okay. they were in like their wow. fourth album, so right, okay. But yeah. we were like fans and stuff, obviously. Yeah, so. uh, right. Mm-hmm. You played the same clubs probably in Glasgow, the Cat House, the Garage, and all that. Yeah, probably yeah. The same path. Pretty almost. much. Pretty much. Do you know Cat House is somewhere that I've never played Nice and Sleazy's or the Cat House. I always feel like no I'm. Way. Yeah, yeah. And like I'm, I feel like I've kind of like missed. Yeah. Like they're like kind of two places. I, like I have played the Cat House, just not with Atlantic. Sorry, uh, okay. that's a lie. Maybe but. like a ten-year <laughs> vivarium show. That would be, I, I love that man. I love it. Yeah. Did both. Like, doing acoustic <laughs> keg and sleazies yeah. and then the same night do sure. like a, a a catty gig. I don't know, I think it'd be good. Well, do you know what? I'll, if, if we do it, we'll give you 10%. <laughs> you, get, you, <laughs> totally, you had the idea. Fist bump. Um, because <laughs> you guys aren't like averse to doing like smaller gigs either. Like, no, you guys we, do we, a lot, eh? we love it. Yeah, yeah. Like I'm sure we're kind of just in the down period between albums right now but I'm sure we kind of always like to start off doing that stuff especially in Glasgow because it's just good fun and we're, we're probably like it's weird I think uh, I'm I think I'm maybe I don't know we love getting to do like the bigger stuff but I, there's it's definitely like more visceral like when you're doing like places like Tuts and stuff like that just yeah, because it's like the yeah yeah it just feel I, I like I like loved like grunge and Hmm. Like punk rock, so I think to me, like that is kind of like what I wanted to do. So anything past that was just yeah. like a bonus, I guess. So, mm-hmm. how's the band changed in the time? You know, because there's, uh, there's so much youth in that first album, yeah, it's yeah, great, yeah. man. It's so different though, and like because I listened to weirdly, I listened to them where I was out the weekend with some friends, and we listened to it just because it was like that 10 yeah. year thing, and uh, it was like it was amazing. It does, it feels like a totally different band to. What we sound like now, but uh, I kind of like miss it in a way, like because it's like it, ha- it definitely has like there's not really any rules. Do you know what I mean? We were, we were yeah. kind of just like, like did what we thought was wall, cool. Just, yeah, yeah. Like, did you guys produce it? Uh, no, we 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 did it in uh, in LA with a guy called John Travis. So he he like definitely produced it, but like we were I still at the stage where we like I don't know if it was really. I, th- I think it was probably quite hard to produce it because we were like honestly just like sticking bits together. There wasn't right. like really any like, I think we were, weren't really following any rules at that point. So it was like, it kind of was just because like the songs were all over the shop. So I don't think you could really produce it <laughs> so much. <laughs> but that that's maybe the beauty of the album though. Yeah, you yeah, me, yeah. And those early songs. Well, same now. That's when I was listening. I was like, geez, this just sounds like cool to me now. That yeah. I think we got, we kind of got, after it came out, we kind of got bored of doing it and wanted to try and do something that was a little bit more structured, like rock songs. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and you know, as you as you get bigger, and, and, and sorry for the parallel again, but it happened to Biffy as well. Mm-hmm. It kind of has to happen. Yeah, you, yeah. You had label support as well, so mm-hmm. you're answerable to people then. I guess. Yeah, yeah, definitely. I get. I think you kind of know, like you've maybe only got. Well, obviously, like age, and when you're on a label, you only get so many chances. Where they'll like, like Vivarium was kind of like we could kind of do what we wanted, and they were kind of like, we'll still you'll get to do another album. But after that, I think we just loved getting to like do it as a job. So yeah. not that we not like you played the game a little bit, but you start to be like, well, you want it to be a career, and you can, and like yeah. you uh, and we wanted to also. For Sam and all of us, I think we were just like, it'd be interesting to see if we could write like kind of more straight ahead songs just to see if we enjoyed it. Because mm-hmm. um, at that point, it's it's really easy to write songs that just have loads of random bits. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Because you don't have to like, doesn't have to make sense. And mm-hmm. we got to the point where it's like, maybe it'd be interesting to try and see if we can just write like three minute songs that like, yeah, yeah. and a more natural thing. And did you notice like a difference? Like once, say when Free came out, mm-hmm. did you notice a difference like with the audience and how they oh, reacted yeah, with yeah, those yeah. songs? Like yeah, yeah, they're definitely like there's like most people now that come to our shows. I reckon there's maybe at most five, ten percent that know. There's probably people that don't know like Vivarium like mm-hmm. stuff. There's mm-hmm. a lot of people that don't know we had an album before Free yeah. just because it wasn't on the radio or, or yeah. it was, I think it, in Scotland maybe a little bit more because. 
it did okay Home year, but, and all that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, and I mean, and this isn't a slight, but there's no anthems on it. No, no, no. It's, I mean, know? it's like uh, it's just like it's just a bit all. I mean, I mean, still now we're like it's not like you know like loads of like old folk like listeners, but like I can see why now there's songs that people are more like okay, this sounds like maybe something I'd hear on the yeah. radio, whereas Vivarium's just like yeah. It is just a bit all over the shop. Yeah. Having said that, I had light speed as my ringtone when I was in school. <laughs> it was just an absolute. <laughs> yeah. 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 Do you still play any of that stuff live? Uh, and you know, we haven't for a while. We sometimes do, like, if we're doing, like, last time when we did, on the last time we did, like, three nights at the Balance, and we just because we knew there'd probably be people come to, like, more than one show, we, like, put some of that stuff in. So we did actually do, like, I don't think we did all of it, but we did. We we it was so much fun to play it. But it's it's weird. They seem like it seemed actually way trickier than just because we haven't yeah, played, played music that, that, yeah, that, yeah. that way that long. Yeah, yeah. So uh, it was good. It was like I I do. I'd love to start playing to them again, but yeah. I kind of just do what I'm told. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, I um, do you know it's funny? Like, so I actually for the first time I saw you guys play um, at uh, what was it? It was the summer sessions. Oh, right, yeah, 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 yeah. Um, uh-huh. And I was with my girlfriend, and she was like, this is the first time she'd seen you guys live as well, but she only knew stuff from, like, free, whereas I was, like, fan from, like, uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, Vivarium and all that, so I was like, this is so cool. <laughs> and, like, what I noticed about you specifically is, man, you hit those drums. It's yeah, yeah, like, yeah, yeah. so much energy. That, that was always my thing. I was never, uh, I've never been technically that great, but I just, I always just, like, loved the physical side of yeah. drumming, like, yeah. Uh, even from the start, like I think I'm just a bit impatient. I'm not great at like, uh, I'm get I'm actually better as I get older, but I'm not great at like sitting and doing the same. I'm not I've not got like the kind of uh, discipline just to p- try and do the same thing for hours. So I yeah. just find it way more fun just to like smash it out. Yeah, it's like yeah. I like to like it's like my like release. Totally, of, man. Yeah, so mm-hmm. um, yeah, yeah so it's more so like. Who have we talked to this about about? Oh, it was last time when we had Cass on and, and he was talking about, you know, playing stuff that he just kind of fell out of love with playing it. It seems like you've managed to keep a hold of that. Like yeah, yeah. playing when you were younger. Mm-hmm. Till yeah. now it's it hasn't lost any of its charm. Yeah, no, definitely. Yeah, I still like love I don't think there's any songs I really get bored of playing. I, mm-hmm. I kind of uh, and when I do I just like I'll find a way of like mixing it up a little bit. Yeah. Like that's when I'll maybe try and like think of like something like another fill. And the yeah. guy that the guys are cool with that because the songs are all relatively like simple on record because mm-hmm. um, I always loved like Chili Peppers albums because like Chad Smith on record is like yeah. so straight and then you see them live and it's weird because you know the songs from the record like it's, you notice the films do you know what yeah. I mean because you're like oh that's so cool he's yeah, like yeah. Um, and I was kind of was kind of, the guys have always been like cool with me doing that like I can mix it up a little bit not like not I like can kind of, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but like they're like not like no, that's not that's not like how it sounds in the album. So um, yeah, I feel that. When you've got sorry, when you were a bit asked something. No, when, no. You, when you've got a bit bigger, did it then start to become like a production as opposed to just you know we can what song do you, not what song do you want to play next? But do you know what I mean? Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. You definitely have more to. Structured. You definitely have to satisfy people, and just because like the, especially when people are paying like mm. like decent amount of money to come see you, like. You don't want to just indulge yourself. You kind of like, you're there for them, really. Like you're obviously you want, like you need to enjoy yourself, but you also like, I, t- I don't think it's the time to like. You can do that when you're recording and stuff like that, yeah. and then it's because then you're like not. No one's been forced to buy it album, but if someone's like, come to a gig. Also, it's just better when people are into it. You know, like yeah. that energy, yeah. like then, kind of transfers onto you. Yeah, I saw you at um, the Picture House. Remember that one? Isn't yeah, it? I that love that venue. Amazing gig. Yeah, man. yeah. Uh, we did that a couple of times. Um, I love that venue. Yeah. It's now like a weather spins, I think. So, uh, yeah, <laughs> what a downgrade, man. Like, <laughs> not, my mate Martin and I went through, I don't think, was I even in Glasgow at that point? I can't remember, but we got down the stairs towards the front and just yeah, energy yeah. in the whole room. It was amazing. I know. I did that. I, I didn't know the show you are talking about. They were... Uh, you did two nights, I think, didn't you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, they were, that was great. I like, yeah. loved that because now, last time, you know, we haven't done Edinburgh in a while, but that was kind of perfect for us because yeah. we, we did the corner exchange once. I never liked it though because it's got like all those big pillars everywhere. Yeah, but, yeah. Uh, but... yeah, and I think Usher, I don't know if Usher Halls like, would work for us because it's a little bit more like. Paramount did the Usher Halls. Yeah, yeah. Was it not seated? 
Yeah, it was oh, quite really? strange. Wolfman was seated. Did you see it? I oh, never right. saw it, but I saw photos from it. Yeah. A lot of my friends were at it. Yeah, I can't imagine it. It's we don't not do well with seats. For a rock <laughs> no, no, no. We we were like castle maybe. Castle would be great. <laughs> I saw uh, Stunning Castle was a venue for a, a while. I saw um, REM at Stunning Castle. Oh, oh no, amazing. It was amazing. In the last month, I've become like obsessed with REM. Oh, like brilliant. never listened to them. Yeah, I never listened to them until then. I was like, whoa, every album is like unreal. Going yeah, way back. my favorite is New Adventures, but I saw them on the Up tour mm-hmm. just when they like Bill Berry had just left the band, so the drums were done by. Joey Warrenker and a drum machine. <laughs> so it was all like really weird like eight oh eight sounds on the album. Like it was total the total departure from uh, how they used to write music. But when it was Joey Warrenker did the tour and just amazing man. Good, yeah. They were so good. Man, so, never so saw good. them. He's an incredible player as yeah, well. Yeah, yeah. Like, um who so, are some of your like aye. favorite kind of drummers to watch or like be inspired by or I mean the the it was Dave Grohl was just the one yes. that was the one when I saw it was like oh I want to do that you know like yeah. that was like an instant moment I was like that looks like that just looks fun and uh, I was never mass I was like into music but never had like an urge to play something then so it was like a Nirvana like on Saturday Night Live uh, oh, wow. playing. Uh, what song were they playing? Because I, I know it exactly because like he was just going so crazy and the uh, <laughs> what's the song on the Neuro, the single Heart Shape Box. That's the one. Yeah. Because uh, he was on SNL and the on the choruses he's just like more than even usual. Like yeah. he's it's like the Tom hits into the on the like uh, on the side of each bar. He's, he just like goes crazy on it. I was like I want to do that. Like straight away. <laughs> yep. And my friends were at the point where they were at all started playing guitar and stuff. So I was like. I could be the drummer. Like, that was, like, the one thing they... Because, like, and also, I was lucky my parents were really cool, so, like, they, they said if I did well in, like, my exams, they'd get me, like, uh, a drum kit. And they were, like, so cowardly. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I know. Do you remember uh, what your first kit was? Uh, yeah, it was a uh, pedal forum which is like even below the export i don't know if it well it, it depends when you bought it because sorry drum nerds um, <laughs> Here we the, go. there was the forum and then there was the export and then they stopped making the export and then they made the forum a little bit better more like export ah, spec right and then they discontinued it and brought back the export I was, gonna say, so I was going to say, export was like every school kit in the world. Yep, I feel yep. like every school had the export. Mm-hmm. But yeah, I, selling kit in the world like through the 90s and early 2000s. Really? Like, yeah. Ah. Uh, tons of them, man. There'll be exports. They'll survive like the nuclear holocaust. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Them, and, them, them and Twinkies. Uh, <laughs> just <survive. and> cockroaches. <laughs> they'll export on every island. <laughs> uh, no, it was Cockroach a, drummers. <laughs> Peril Farm and Wine Red. It came with an, instru- oh, yeah, an, yeah. an instruction video with totally. uh, Eric Singer. Oh, amazing. <laughs> <Yeah>. Nice. <laughs> it was good. Do you know I've still got, got it? Video somewhere well. Still got the video, and I still got the kit, but I took the wrap off of it. I wanted to like make my own drum kit and stopped at the point like <laughs> where I take all the wrap off. It looks I pretty th- cool. I think everybody goes through that phase. <laughs> I did the same. My first kit was a Tama Imperial Star. And it had a black wrap on it, and I thought, I'm going to take that off because it all looked absolutely righteous. <laughs> well, halfway through the wrap, and like the wood started to split and all that oh, kind of thing. No and I was way. like, I don't want to do it anymore. I give up. I, I want to go it. back. I want to go home. <laughs> uh, what do you play now? Uh, I now play, I've got a Gretschiosi custom. I've got I've got quite a few Gretsches, but uh, I've, since at first when I was on Gretsch, they kind of, the, when it was owned by. Fender mm-hmm. at that point they wouldn't import them, the USA Customs. So you, could, I think the best thing you could get was be it renowned probably. No, you could get they, they were doing the new classics because oh, yeah, they were yeah. they were Amber went oh, when, right. when I they gave me a renown when I first moved on to Gretsch because I used to have a CNC endorsement. Mm. Um, that was the first one I had, and then got the renown. And then the, when the new classics came out, they were on such a Given every drummer or like on their great choice around your class, it was a really good kit. It's they really, they're so drums, heavy. Yeah. They, you know they had proportionate shells, so the shells got thicker the bigger the drum got. Ah, and I'm playing twenty four yeah. kicks, so the, so the kick was like crazy. Around, yeah, man, yeah. You know. uh, but they sounded a boss. They were brilliant. Uh, uh, and then I think they started doing the Brooklyns, and you could get the Brooklyn. I think the Brooklyn might be. I think you still do them, but the new, yeah, new yeah. classics no, it's done now. Yeah, yeah, um, and then. I know. I actually got a new Gretsch when when they were making my Brooklyn kit. They gave me like a new classic kit with like it's honestly got. I think it's like I've got like twenty drums because they were like 
basically like, oh, we're not finished your kit in time, so we'll just give you these. <laughs> and then they're just like, you can just keep them. So I have like, I have like a new, cl- and a woods. I had another new classic, a sparkly one, right. like vintage glass one. And oh, then, right. yeah, and then they gave me like a kind of, uh, kind of woods, kind of dark wood one. It's just like I really nice. Dundee. Shout out to Steph at Rainbow because I was playing with the, the band I was playing with. I didn't drive at the time, and they had not the biggest car, <laughs> so I didn't take any drums. And Steph at Rainbow hooked me up with a new classic pre-owned thing that he had. And oh yeah, amazing. yeah, yeah, good, really good drums. Like old school sizes was like twenty-two fusion, so it was 10, 12, 14 but with a twenty-two. I couldn't but hit yeah. a ten-inch tom man. I'd, 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 I'd honestly anything below fourteen. I'm just like I'm so got no accuracy. Fourteen rack. See, that was the one thing I noticed, like, the first thing, because I'd never, as I say, I've never seen you guys live, and I was just looking at your rack, Tom, and I was like, is that, like, a floor, Tom? It's just a floor, Tom, with the legs That's taken out of it. Brilliant. Right. Uh, Love, yeah. Love it, man. So but, 14, 18? 14, 16, 18, wow. I got to it, and, uh, yeah, but I've got, the on the USA Custom, I got the rack a bit shorter, so it's a 14 still, but it's 12 deep. So it's and That's it's literally the size of my floor. Uh, is it? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, I, th- I thought old fourteens were like f- the Gretsch ones. I've always, always been fourteen by fourteen. Yeah, yeah. Totally. So, um, so yeah, like do you know fourteen what? by thirteen and all that. Do they? Ah, okay. Because uh, I uh, so the the USA custom one, I don't have to take the legs off it because it, it's just got like little black tacks and the holes where the legs used to go in, but really? you just can't see it up, up close. You can. But. <laughs> <laughs> it's broken mirrors. Why Gretsch? <laughs> uh, well, do you know it was kind of like like serendipitous, and I never. Um, the boys all had like vendor endorsements and uh, oh, okay. I was really happy. I was about to get like another CNC kit um, and the the guy that was the vendor rep at the time was like, oh, we're, we also look after Gretsch drums and we'd love to like give you a kit to try out. And I honestly was like, no, I'm okay. I'm, 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 I'm fine. <laughs> I'm and, uh, but he was like, oh, please, could, let's just like, I was more just didn't want to let him down because I was just about to order this new kit. Uh, and I was like, no, and he was like, please let, let us just send you one. And, uh, like you could, if you like it, you can we'll like work something out, or, uh, or you can just give it back or whatever. And uh, I, I we got it and I like sat in our studio for like a couple of months and I was just gonna send it back and then one day, uh, they sent me like it's because they sent me a twenty four kick and I right. didn't use twenty two at the time so I was like oh no that's too big and uh, one day I was just like ah do you know what I'll give it a shot and like it genuinely like sixty seconds and I was like. This is like the best drum kit I've ever oh, wow. ever played. It was because it had like the die cast hoops as yeah, well. Yeah, yeah. Never used like the big thick hoops yeah, and uh, and because I hit hard, I was like, whoa. Because I used to have a Yamaha, like a, one of the first kits I bought was like a Yamaha. I don't remember like they did like a twenty four kick. It was like black with an orange stripe. Tour custom. Tour custom. Yeah. That was it. Yeah. I remember those as well, man. <laughs> but the kick drum, I could never get the kick drum on it to sound good. Yeah, it would be too light for you. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Be too, the shell would probably be too thin. I think maybe that's what it was because it was pretty like a pretty lightweight yeah. drum. Uh, so I thought twenty four kicks. That's how they sounded. So oh, I was like, right. oh no, I'm not gonna like it. And uh, and so I was like, yeah, oh my like god. Real drum. <laughs> yeah. Oh. Yeah, and I was just like hooked. And now I'm like, I'm like totally like. Fanboy for the company. Is, like. They are amazing drums, man. Uh, they yeah. Make amazing drums. Do you what kind of snares do you play then? I just have. It's like I've, I've for, for like pretty much since I got the kit. Like they gave me like the hammered metal fourteen oh. by eight, and uh, I I just loved it because um because I hit them hard. Mm-hmm. It sounds great. I think if you don't hit those drums hard, they don't sound good because they're so deep. So, yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, I, I just I've used them just constantly. Have you seen that? Have you seen this as well? Adam? that YouTube series called The One. No. It's like like all these top end Gretsch snares are lined up, and all these top end Gretsch artists just walk around playing them, and they pick like their favorite drums. So you've got like Steve Ferroin and Joey Kramer and. Like all these Mike Johnston, all these guys that are super high profile Gretsch artists just walking around. These drums sound amazing, man. Every mm-hmm. single one of them. And it's like full range drums, so not even the proper flagship stuff. Mm-hmm. It's great. It's heaven. Yeah, so there's like, I think it was like 10 videos or something. Okay. And, you know, you can get here basically every single one is a different snare drum. Every artist picks a different one. That's so cool. And they're just like, and some of them are like, oh man, I, I can't decide between this one. I can't say like the fourteen by eight, but the forty by six and a half. Yeah, brass sounds like that. It's a great video series, man. I need to check that out because yeah, I've never seen that. It's yeah. totally nerdy, but it's. Great. <laughs> yeah. um, but it's all, like you get to hear like Steve Ferron playing because Steve Ferron's amazing. <laughs> um, so yeah, you should check it out. Yeah, because they, they've, they've kind of made um. Maybe a renaissance is the wrong word to use, but like yeah. I feel they have yeah. Like definitely. the last 
Because it was when we opened up or when the shop opened, they weren't that big a deal. No one was playing Gretsch. That's why like, no. I didn't really. I knew that like like the Stones and stuff had played them like yeah. back in the day, but I kind of felt I I think maybe at the time they were. I don't know. It felt like they weren't. Yeah, maybe just distribution was not as great as it could be, or price, or something. You know, uh, uh, to bring an American drums in was quite hard. I mean, um, but the distribution's a lot better now, um, so there's a lot more access. Mm-hmm. You know, and I guess there's uh, guys like Mark Showman playing with Pink, playing Gretsch drums everywhere. It's mm-hmm. the guys yeah. like that. I mean, we had Mark in the shop clinic a couple of times. You know, so. People get to see Gretsch drums a little mm-hmm. more is, is kind of where it's at. And then yeah. even for the for the YouTube generation, so like mm-hmm. Mike Johnson, obviously, yeah, being yeah, one of the yeah, biggest. Yeah. So obviously uh-huh. he's a Gretsch artist. So yeah. things like that, people are seeing it more and more. It's kind of why you pick your drums, isn't it? Like when you grew up, because I always wanted to, I always wanted to play like Tama when, uh, like Dave yeah, because Dave and then yeah. Taylor Hawkins was playing them at, right. at the oh, time as well. Like when I first he's got in. Yes, yes. So that was that was kind of the thing because. Uh, within, I think they must have been on a kind of drive to like get like people back into yeah. playing Gretsch because I remember like so many people that I liked were suddenly playing Gretsch yeah. kind of all around that same time because Taylor got that kit and I was like, ah, oh, wait, they're like cool again. Yeah, and, and I think <laughs> guys, guys like that helped them stop being a jazz brand. Right, right, okay. Because yeah, yeah. they were like the jazz drummer's uh, kit of choice for the like forever. Right, okay. you know, all the 60s guys and 70s guys were playing Gretsch drums 50s, 60s, 70s you know they were all playing Gretsch no, like, like they weren't even playing Ludwig a lot of them were playing most of them were playing Gretsch right okay cool so it, it got it away from being mm-hmm. that kind of snobby jazz brand you know because like really hip guys are playing them yeah and, yeah. and like slaying hitting real hard <laughs> you, know, you know so yeah you're right man it, I think it just got people's attention yeah yeah I mean I think uh, I definitely it seems like and they're not just they're doing quite like there's obviously like rock guys playing them, but it seemed like they've, they're doing like the pop thing. Yeah, yeah. Cool. totally. Carlos playing with Steely Dan and all that. You know, yeah, he's been playing. Them. Carol Brazil as well. Yeah, that's right. God, that's right. Robbie, Robbie Williams. Yeah. Um, yeah. So, uh, like, how does it work? Because you know, as much as I've been in a shop for thirteen years, I'm still a wee bit ignorant to how things like endorsements work when you're on tour. So, mm-hmm. do they provide support for you? Or yeah. Do you, or do you just? Do you have a kit in the country that you drive, or are you? Uh, yeah, I mean, for the most part, I just uh, I have the kits. They just come. So anything in Europe, unless there's like logistics you can't get between them, mm-hmm. that will just go. The the kit will go anywhere in in Europe. So like but, your own personal kit. Yeah, right. yeah, yeah, okay. yeah. Um, and then I have a Gretsch kit in America. Right. Uh, and anywhere else, like we've been, like when we go to like Russia and stuff. You get you just get in touch with them and they will sort it out through like a higher company, you right. know, like so in in the UK it would usually come from uh, like John Henry's yeah. in London, but uh, they'll just find that version of that, like so, and, and there's just one everywhere, like uh, weird, like like when you go to like South Africa, they still <laughs> somehow find you yeah, like this. Yeah. Yeah. That, that's obviously the reliability of the brand as well. Yeah, like and I think. Because we get a lot of people coming in here saying about custom brands. That's the problem with CNC was always was like yeah. that. It was like they're just not in every country. Do you know what I mean? And yeah. um, I, they were they were. I loved their drums, but um, just the fact they were based out of like Kansas or whatever, and yeah, trying just, to get but, hold of them. Yeah, it was just yeah. like it was just like it was tricky. Yeah. It's like I remember growing up, like watching a lot of stuff from Vans Warp Tour, and yeah. like they like. Fair enough on the artists on that would all be like SJC or something. And they would all be playing SJC because SJC were like supporting that tour. But then right. the amount of times you would see a band go to do a random college show or something and it's a DW kind of <laughs> playing. Yeah, it's yeah, like, yeah. well, you know what I mean? Like, I mean, obviously, again, things like distribution have obviously got a lot better for brands like that because they're more widely known. Yeah, kind of thing, yeah, but, yeah. But the CNC stuff, like, yeah. If you're in like Poland or something like that, like yeah. what's the chances? Also, something breaks. Well, that's that was the thing. Like the hoops, the because they're like not like super. They're like well made in terms of like, but they're not like super durable. Like because yeah. uh, the hoop broke and it was like just like see, try to get a new one was just like, yeah, not their fault, but like try to like just sort of like a bass drum hoop custom made from yeah. America. I was like, oh, it'll be there in like six months. Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. Great. Yeah, you're, 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 trying to find a drum store in the middle of nowhere yeah yeah I got a CNC kit once in America which was like I think it was like MGMT's or something oh. and it was like genuinely like the smallest kick drum I've ever seen <laughs> it was just like it was amazing this story but I was like I don't I, I think I think I honestly like kicked this across the room or something. it was like, it was like I, I think it may have been like 
a 14 kicker. I, I'm not joking. Maybe it wasn't, but to me it looked like yeah. that can't well, be a kicker. When you used to play 24s. Yeah, so yeah, like, yeah. Like, what is this? What is this? <laughs> Yeah. Remember that time we saw Twenty Atlantic in Kansas and I got the bass drop <laughs> in my face? Brilliant, man. Sorry. What a night. Um, and it's Zildjian, right? Zildjian, yeah. 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 I, I always, always played Zildjian. Yeah, always, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, like even, luckily now, I don't have to, to buy them, but even when I did. Yeah. I was, I was Are like, you on K's now? Uh, yeah, okay. okay. Uh, no, it's actually a mixture. Of the, I've got like K's and just like the Avidas or Avidas, uh-huh. like not the customs now. Um is it Sweet Ride? Sweet Rides. Sweet Rides. And then the other one, the Avidas one, is like, because I use like Rides as crashes. Oh, okay. Right. So, wow. uh, yeah, like, so it's a 22 Sweet Ride and a 24 Sweet Ride, which I actually use right. for my, uh, and I don't know what the, what's the other one? It's an Avidas something. Wait, that's a sweet that's a sweet ride as yeah, well. Yeah, the Avidas, the sweet ride. I think it's a twenty-one. Yeah, it's a, no, I've got a twenty-three as well. Ah, I've got yeah, a so twenty-one or twenty-three. Yeah. Yeah, and sorry, and then it's a light ride. The K's are oh, the light rides. Yeah. yeah, yeah. The K light ride is one of the best symbols in the world. Yeah. Like I think it probably the best symbol in their catalog. I th- I think so. I do. I agree. Beautiful with that. symbol. Because mm-hmm. you can it kind of works in with everything. Yep. And yeah. And when you crash on it, it, sounds to me it's like. The nicest sounding crash I've ever played as well. Anyone that plays one, if they ha- if we have one, and it's like, yep, yeah, I'll yeah, have yeah. That, please. <laughs> and it's also why you'll see it in a lot of touring bands, mm-hmm. like set up after a Zildjian artist. Yeah, it's like yeah, there'll yeah. be a light ride in there somewhere. You know, so, like, I know. I can, like, yeah. that's like that's the one for me now. Yeah. Like, I love it. Eddie Thor's a big fan of that symbol as well. <laughs> yeah, I was speaking yeah, to him yeah. one time, and he was like, "Man, this symbol just does everything." Like, <laughs> he's a good drummer. He's yeah, a really, yeah, he's very good drummer. Well. Very We've nice guy as well. We've had him in shop a few times, eh? Have you? Like, he's a good hang. You should yeah. get him in for the. You should get him to do a clinic. He'd be a good. Oh, clinic. Have you? Have you? Oh, he's done. T- I want to say he's done two. Technically two, yeah. Because he's <laughs> like the first ever. Was it the first one? I can never remember. I think it was the first drum show we did in the concert hall. He played on that, so he did a slot there, and then he did the opening of a Leeds branch. So him, ah, him and Reynolds were there for the opening of the Leeds ah, branch. Ah, nice they, one. They both cool. played. Um, but uh, we, he also was so cool. We did a, he, We ended up with tickets for LTA. Oh, nice! At the at, at ABC, God, for it. R. I. P. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and he hung out, and we've met. He's we've met Rona, and, and yeah, all yeah. Met his missus, and yeah, he's just. I remember last time he was in town, we all went for a beer, kind of vibe. You know, he's, he's very really nice guy. Yeah, he is. Oh, in fact, actually, he did a master class for us as well at the academy. The Wasn't academy it? of music and sound. I. Fun fact for you, you might not know this, I don't know if you do, but see that same night, because uh-huh. I listened to Eddie on an, a, another podcast. Um, <laughs> a rival and, podcast. A rival podcast. <laughs> and um, apparently that same night, he went to see Blink-182, because we were playing in Glasgow that same night, <laughs> and he went to the show and... Hung with Travis. Hung with Travis, yeah. yeah. Nah, that's, right. that's there so you go. cool. Imagine yeah. that, imagine, was like, yeah, I've just played a master class and then I'm just going to go and hang out with my buddy, Trav, <laughs> yeah. you know. Yeah, he's some boy. <laughs> um, so yeah, we've had Ed a couple of times. You know, he's, nice. he's super, he's super humble as mm-hmm. well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. A lot of those guys round about that are, mm-hmm. that are doing that now. Um, I'm really interested in how the band's evolved. Yep. Like me too. <laughs> like, like well, I mean, you touched on it a wee bit earlier, like songwriting and stuff. But how's that process changed for you and the band? Well, I mean, it's kind of it's it's changed for us. It's changed like an awful lot and in terms of like when we started we wrote all the songs together like in a room like mm-hmm. Sam would come with like a basic mm-hmm. guitar part and we'd write it like together and it took take ages just because right. like it's like four guys trying to figure <laughs> stuff out and <laughs> uh, and also at that time none of us were like I, I barely knew how to play drums at the same time so it was like <laughs> it was like oh I don't know how to do anything so uh, and over the years it just started to move that um, Sam was just bringing things that were more finite. He had just more of like a vision for it, if yeah. you know what I mean. Uh, and so we don't we don't write songs like in a room together anymore. Like now Sam and Ross will write things, like they'll just make things and like they're getting pretty into production stuff. So now it's gone from all writing in a room with like everything like super loud to yeah. like they'll kind of just make a demo, like a pretty like far, like not, not like a really basic demo. Yeah, like, yeah. Uh, and then that will have like drum ideas, and then I'll come in 
and do my thing and be like maybe like oh that doesn't actually it would maybe groove better if it did this uh-huh. and I kind of get and just and anything anything that's like a, something a drummer would do yeah. I like I kind of just do all that bit. Yeah. So, so it's still a very collaborative process. It's, yeah, it's really yeah. collaborative. I I just kind of stay out of it until the songs at a point where they're like now we want to like think about drums because to me, uh, like I I like once once I'm involved in that point then I I've got like I can I have an opinion but I always think there's no point <laughs> in me like. I th- we used to do the thing where like we'd like like question something straight away without letting it like maybe breathe for a bit, yeah, yeah. and we, it's just sometimes better to like get to, to a point where Sam and Ross are like, okay, we think this is good. Do you know you rather me coming at the start and be like, oh, I don't like the <laughs> drum part. Do you know what I mean? Like, <laughs> yeah, so, yeah, totally. um, so yeah, it's it's weird. It's really streamlined. It makes it really easy to write music. They're they're pretty prolific at writing songs. They right. they, they write them. It never seems to be like hard for them to come up with like. Yeah ideas and it, to me I can actually be way more creative see when we used to write everything together when you're trying to I feel like you kind of rush things because you don't want to be the guy being like yeah. oh wait a second I don't write it like that like you know so we we kind of like all not want to be the one holding things up whereas now I can listen to them I've got my own studio now so I can I can just like sit and play for as long as I want to the yeah point, so, so you can at least mm-hmm. let the idea form totally before yeah, yeah. you've even questioned it I exactly you know, yeah yeah yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah exactly no it's it's way better I think for all of us just in terms of it in terms of the enjoyment you don't feel like mm-hmm. the you don't feel the pressure as much of it it's mm-hmm. like just it's more it's like fun yeah unless you get on with life as well exactly yeah yeah I do, yeah, I could just not do anything <laughs> I'd be like sorry guys I got yeah. no ideas for this one <laughs> I'm I'll play the devil cool. <laughs> yeah. 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 yeah you play drums in the devil <laughs> do they want to do, no <laughs> yeah I'll take a break <laughs> yeah totally I guess as well with like you talking about campers and a computer man it's demos done no time so, so quick you yeah know, like, yeah right into logic it sounds great mm-hmm. yeah 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 yeah. And drum drum samples now are getting to the point where it's like kind of scary. We're like, oh, yeah, it's, it's I, 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 yeah, yeah. like you yeah. don't want to like you're at the point now. It's like, oh man, that sounds like really good already. Yeah, totally. <laughs> it's, it's like drum drum samples like deep fakes. Yeah, totally. yeah, 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 like yeah. So good. I know. Like the Logic drummer program now. Mm-hmm. So I've got a DTX at home. Plug that right into Logic, and it's like, whoa, <laughs> that's amazing. I know. I have got superior drummer as well, and it's like properly like really nine thousand kits and black beauties and old camcos, mm-hmm. and it sounds amazing. And you can't. It's more now because you can't see where you've like glued things together. Mm-hmm. That's like really like it's, it's, it's Yeah, it's I think program has changed as well because a lot of people that are programming or program it like it's being played by a drummer. Yeah, I think that's the mm-hmm. major difference now. Is it doesn't mm-hmm. sound like some guy has just kind of tried to woodenly put it. <laughs> yeah, know? yeah, so yeah. You're right. There's no seams on it. You know. Hopefully, it doesn't get too good though. We know, yeah, no, we know, totally. no, nothing for me to do. The world will <laughs> end. Yeah. yeah. Well, I mean, they did say that about the 808. It's going to replace studio drummers, and then it just. It doesn't. Yeah, that's Ha-ha. cool. <laughs> Um, do you take electronics out live? We haven't, but there's a. I think we're going on this next album because right. there's a lot more electronics on it, and mm-hmm. in terms of, because they've started writing drums more, starting off from a computer. Mm-hmm. There's just the dynamic things that I think will probably not tons, but I think we'll have at least some sort of like kind of pad mm-hmm. yeah. going into like an SPDX or mm-hmm. something. Yeah. I think I'd I'd like to just have a trigger so I'm still playing a real drum because. Never oh, been, yeah, I've yeah. never been that satisfied playing pads. I yeah. used to have like a like a a Roland electronic kit, and I just, I think because I really like hitting hard, mm-hmm. I just couldn't get that that same feeling out yeah. of it. Cause mm-hmm. Yeah, and and they'll be like, you know, you you need to dial in trigger sensitivities and all that. Yeah, yeah, it's yeah. Whole, Which is its own minefield. Oh, is it? Oh, it is, Got I that think, to look forward to. Yeah. I, was, <laughs> <laughs> I mean, we are so pro electronic in here, right? Yeah, totally. You know, it's, love it. Uh, we love it. But me and Chris both on our own setups for our own various things that we do, both incorporate some form of electronics. So like, Roland make it so much easier, and so do Yamaha. Like now to incorporate it than what it maybe was like ten years ago. Yeah, or yeah. Something you know. I think there's still like, like if you were a keyboard player, mm-hmm. you would think nothing is spending your night programming patches. It's just a normal thing to do. Yeah, yeah. With the keyboard, but when you drummers get electronics. That mindset's not there. Uh, yeah, I see what you they've mean. Because never really had to. Mm-hmm. So they get out of the box and like, it's not doing what I want to do. Like, well, <laughs> Straight away. Have you spent any time with it? <laughs> uh, no. Right, right, well, we'll need to show you how to do that so that, okay. you know, understanding exactly what a trigger is and how it's not a drum and how it won't behave like a drum. Okay. And, you know, so it's all that stuff. But it's fun, man. Yeah, it is. And like, 
the most satisfying part is when you get to the end of a song and you've been using triggers and you're like, yes. You would like nailed it. Nothing double triggered. <laughs> nothing went wrong. Brilliant. Maybe I should come to you guys when we start this because I, I, I think I'll definitely come lose with my mind. Liam's a wizard. L- Liam is oh, yeah? like... Yeah, he is like Mr. Electronic. He taught Gandalf <laughs> things, man. Like, <laughs> he did. Um, you know, he, he's got... He's got a computing science degree, firstly. Ah, okay. You know, so his mind is just... Uh, trigger for Yeah, he just <laughs> understands it, Pun, you know. No and, uh, he, um, he bought an Elise's kit and, like, stripped it to bits to see how it was built and all that. He's like, <laughs> he is that guy, you know. So <laughs> he knows sort of inside out how to do it, you know. So Fair enough. put an appointment in with him. Yeah, well, yeah, I will. Book you, book you in with the wizard. <laughs> yeah. So... Looking at your kind of Instagram, you wouldn't even think that you're mm. like the drummer of this massive rock band because oh, it's right, mostly yeah. kind of photography stuff. Yeah, so is that yeah, like yeah. a kind of side hobby you have? Or yeah, again though, it's kind of one that was it's like um, that kind of came out of going and touring. You just have so much time during the day to do mm-hmm. nothing basically. That um, I got like a camera for Christmas, like a, just a digital SLR, like. Mm-hmm. Just it was it was like honestly just like a way to like waste time and I kind of just got really into it. It's mm-hmm. just I, I I find it really relaxing to just take photos and stuff. I've started yeah. like now doing like film stuff, and so that's oh. kind of like just because it's harder. <laughs> so it's more just like, <laughs> yeah. but yeah, it's it's I've never been good at like self promotion stuff. So I always just use the that stuff to like. To, as an outlet to yeah. get photos out there and mm-hmm. do you, you know. do all the editing as well? Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, yeah. Do you know who Victor and Drizzle is? I don't. He's a like big time session guy in LA. He played on a lot of smaller sets tour and stuff. He does. Um, he does all that. He does like a video tour diaries and gives a copy to everyone after the tour. <laughs> so he'll film right. little bits of every That's day so cool. and then he'll just cut like a tour highlights video together for the band and just. Uh, that's really That's nice cool, yeah. so it's like okay. total like avenue for you yeah yeah next yeah. time you're in yeah. Japan I'd, or something uh, you know, you and, and you're like on bullet trains and stuff there's just so many cool things to I know on. and that's the thing it's more just a way of remembering it and stuff like that and I always yeah. like thought like it's like for the band because I take loads of photos for the band not like not like the proper promo shots yeah. but like all the kind of behind the scenes stuff of, I kind of like mm-hmm. doing it anyway but it's just like you mean you don't have to pay someone to come in? <laughs> <So true. laughs> and it's it's an interesting as like a fan of the band, yeah, like, to yeah, see yeah. that kind of stuff because not like, it's maybe becoming more common now, but mm-hmm. bands certainly again ten years ago wouldn't you wouldn't find that kind of stuff unless it was like on like an exclusive like iTunes download totally, or you know yeah, that kind yeah. of thing or a DVD of like yeah. you know? it's become kind of the thing now. There's like bands I know that have are taking a photographer out before like a sound guy which sounds it seems crazy to me (laughs) yeah like but it's kind of almost where the world itself is moving to there's a lot of people like managers are like honestly like the 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 kind of like evidence that you've played the gig is more important than the gig itself which is kind of sad to me is like oh my but I kind of I see that I mean they're probably it's probably true in many respects, but it's kind of sad at the same time. Yeah, it's quite scary. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. like yeah, I'm a musician that doesn't know how to play music, <laughs> you know, but there's a photo to prove I did it. Yeah, yeah, that's a very very strange to me. Yeah, bizarre. Yeah, because I like me and Chris talk about this quite a lot sometimes in some like downtime from the shop. But it's, we've now because our job involves drums all mm-hmm. the time, and we love playing drums. We're most often than not, we're playing at the weekends, that kind of thing. Yeah, like. We also find something where we need something outside of drums to like okay. keep yeah, us kind yeah, of yeah, yeah. sane a little bit. <laughs> yeah. So like, is photography kind of like that for yeah, you? Yeah, I or? think so. Yeah, like I kind of like um, I definitely like drum like drumming and music is like the number one for me. Like it, that kind of always comes first. But that is definitely I'm really into like I'm actually really into running and drum and uh, photography. Those are like the two cool. things I do that are like outside like socialising yeah, yeah, but like totally, the, yeah, yeah. I think without like, yeah those like those three things together to me are like definitely keep me sane like if I, if I, I kind of if I couldn't do drumming if I couldn't play drums or run like I'd really struggle just yeah. to like it's just as like an outlet and uh, the photography is the kind of like that's kind of relaxed thing that yeah. kind of mm-hmm. I can spend a bit the of time over the drumming and running will probably kind of inform each other eh? yeah so absolutely stamina and cardio and all that's that why stuff. I started doing it I did I ran in school uh, I was like, oh, I was always okay at it, and then when the band started to play longer gigs, I was like, Jesus is like yeah. hard work. So yeah, yeah. Uh, mm-hmm. I started running, 
uh, and just, just I really enjoy it anyway. Do you run but, a tour? Yeah, 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 like most days. Yeah, so that, that gives you like alone time, downtime. It's that as well, because especially on tour, you just don't have any time in your own. Which I I'm like quite a solitary person. I'm not. Right. I don't. I'm not great just being in people's company all the time. Yeah, so yeah. that's like at least. 30 minutes where you can just yeah. not yeah. speak to someone. <laughs> just relax. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Because, yeah. yeah. I mean, if you're travelling around on a bus together as well or a van, it's like, you're in close and close. proximity. Yeah, like. yeah. And do you know what? They're all, we're lucky, all the guy, like, guys in the band are all, we're all really chilled out. There's not, like, any, like, nutcases. <laughs> and we're all, like, we've always been, we, again, like, like you were saying when you, like, first met me, like, we, the band was always more important than, like, the, like, the pure party element of it yeah, so yeah, we, totally. we were never like massive like drinkers like not like squares but just not like not getting like wrecked every, yeah. we never like drink before gigs just because right. I don't know again you're like I'd hate to go to a, I'd see a band and like they're like they play really bad because they're oh, wrecked dude, I, I saw Ryan Adams in Brixton he was 90 minutes late <laughs> and he was steaming <laughs> just like flowing like it's just kind of rude man yeah, yeah. bad pattern yeah, yeah. bad form mm-hmm. Um, so yeah and just put a sour taste on the gig because you're like really can't wait to see this guy and he turns up and he can barely speak yeah yeah like, how are you getting through the gig firstly <laughs> like secondly, it's that's impressive to be fair yeah I, I guess maybe that's the sign of a maniac I don't know did a lot of trouble at the moment so uh, yeah that's true <laughs> uh, let's not go there but I guess that's the right way to do it though you know yeah, mm-hmm. you know and yeah. if you're I mean you're hundreds of miles from home in America in a van and it's like yeah. whose turn is it to drive like you've had yeah, like yeah. two beers already so the key there is to not learn to drive to your 30 <laughs> like me I just that messed up that year, uh, just same, same. Yes. I know but I waited till the point where we were luckily not having to drive in vans so much so I was like so I'll wait I know yeah, yeah. Great. I know well do you know what we've got to, it takes longer to pack our stuff down Hell yeah, it's, like, it's a lot more work involved <laughs> Uh, so you have a tech then and all that? Yeah. yeah. Well, it was your brother It was my brother for a long time, and it was, and it was a guy called Adam Johnson. For He's kind of jumped in when Stevie, my brother, uh, now goes out with Bullet from a Valentine. Oh, and wow. stuff like that. So cool, he, wow. he's been with him for like the last four years, and they tour a lot. Yeah. So he, mm-hmm. he's just not been about much for us. So um, he came out and did, when we were doing Ridden and Leeds and that Bell, Bell Houston show last month when you were at there. Uh, oh, cool. He was, he was working for us there. It was so much better. Oh, really? yeah, I like I like packing kits down. I like that because that's like it's, I don't know if you guys are the same, but I like the after like that that kind of like it kind of like relaxes you again. I do not like do not like setting kits up, but I like say <laughs> taking them down. I I don't like setting kits up when I know say it's a wedding. If we've got like half an hour to set uh, up, yeah, yeah, and yeah, there's, there's a like... bride looking at you from the other side of the room, <laughs> going like, ah, you better hurry up. Like, oh. I have a specific way the hardware bag has to be packed. Right. Okay. No one's allowed to pack. It. Like, my wife's works with us she sings with us and she's a drummer too ah uh, okay and I've stopped her on several times like, sweetheart uh, I'll get that it's okay hey. if you put the kit in the cases maybe I'll, I think I'll... I think drums are a little bit OCD like I'm, I'm yeah, really yeah. like that I like have to do it in a particular order yeah. mm-hmm. you, get, you like, kind of don't want people to help you're like get away do you touch my drum set I <laughs> know <laughs> Um, so Stevie we're working is it Jason Bold now it is yeah it's, it was monster. he's brilliant he used to play in Pitch Shifter back yeah, in the right. day yeah, and yeah. we put him on clinic did you yeah about 2007 he's, he's a great scary monster that guy plays in his bare feet he does he does he does have yeah, it it's... which I've, I've tried to do and I'm just like I can't I don't yeah, know how anyone can do it man yeah. and, and they get the drummer Andy from Fall Out Boy like the first time I saw Fall Out Boy oh, I say live but it was like a live video of them from like right. Tina Park or something like that <laughs> um, and I noticed that Andy played in his bare feet as well yeah, and I was yeah. just like sitting there like I'm gonna do that and like <laughs> char the bottom of my foot because I had like a proper like spiky little pedal like, oh. I, I just don't get it no, no. Yeah. I just don't get it I, I, don't, I can't say you can get enough power out of it like I feel like you need that yeah it's like driving with your feet or something as well like I, do that. I, 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 I haven't just passed my test I'm learning that if you drive in thick sole shoes it's really bad yeah it's, it's, it changes the game a it little does bit doesn't change it change the game like don't know how to break so uh, like, you, you hit the brake next thing you're halfway through the windshield <laughs> very much. whoa yeah, sure. I, wear, I used to wear I still do but I, when I first passed I was wearing Doc Martens and like the, the, they kind of take over to pedals so you're pretty much like you're <laughs> like you braking and accelerating at the same time <laughs> yeah. do you play drums in Docs? Uh, no I, I mean like occasional sound checks when I'm being really lazy right. but it's like it feels like you're playing a different drum kit I, I wore do you know weirdly I wore for like the first 
10 years I played drums or longer I played uh, I always wore Converse yeah, nice. but I've just started wearing Vans and I feel like they're way better like because yeah. the, the sole doesn't like yeah. the, the cons like eventually are just totally slippy at the front yeah, and it just feels like you've been walking around your bare feet all day <laughs> yeah, yeah. Vans are way more comfortable yeah, I, I, on that with you man I got my first pair of Vans for my birthday and again out of laziness I was like I'll put my cons on in a minute to play and I was like whoa this is yeah. like it's like feels like your foot is stuck on the pedal it's yeah. amazing yeah. <laughs> Which I'm going to be it. controversial here. I play Nikes. Ah, I don't know. That's too so. I, I need a bit. You, is it not need like a tooth and a sole? Are they all right? Is it all right, man? Like, yeah. I feel as though I can, like, I feel limber. I feel a little <laughs> bit limber. Um, I can't. I, I'll, I'll, do you know what? I'll, I'll, my next gig, I'll let you know, right? Okay, I would tell you. Do you have special running shoes? For, for running? Uh-huh. Oh, yeah, yeah, have yeah. Have you ever yeah. played in those? I have. Yeah. They're, they're okay, but right. I get, again, it's more like. I kind of feel like you're kind of cheating on like right. my other hobby. Like it's more like I, I feel like I, I should be like that should just be for for when I'm in my running right. mode. So yeah, it's I have one. Yeah, I I started wearing cons originally because I was like I wanted to look cool. Yeah. It was purely like yeah, that because yeah. there was like I don't know if they're still popular, but I remember there was like. There is like actual like drumming trainers. Yeah, have you ever yeah. seen? Do you yes, know, sir, no yeah, way. Yeah. For it, when we put Weckle on clinic, some guy asked him. Like put hands up. <laughs> what shoes do you play in? Because back in the day, he had Vic for make him drum shoes. There was, like, yeah, there was yeah, a yeah. really sketchy nineties advert in <laughs> modern drummer somewhere. These Vic for drum shoes, but Rowan. like he just shut the guy down really well because he was just like, "Well, dude, you know how many times have you gone into a drum store and how much attention have you paid to the drumsticks?" That you hold in your hands. Mm-hmm. So why wouldn't you pay similar attention to the stuff that I you wear in your feet? I know. Yeah, and the totally. guy's like, uh. oh, cool, man. And he's like, but yeah, I'm playing Rocket Dogs. So <laughs> this, is like, <laughs> this is like brilliant, Dave. I'm not like, yes, banging yeah, someone cool, at a cool, clinic. Yeah, cool. um, Kai had yeah, to leave. It's an actual thing, man. Like, you, have you ever had to play in formal shoes? No, I I did one time and it was just. Forget about it. Oh, yeah, really? yeah, it's mental. Yeah, yeah. I had to play in brogues one time. Yeah, That's that horrendous. Is this like for a wedding yeah, thing? Yeah, I think yeah, it? yeah, man. It feels like it feels like you've been playing ankle weights on or something. <laughs> They're slippy to begin with. Yeah. They're like made. Yeah. It's like <laughs> an actual yeah, yeah, thing. They're already challenging walking around. <laughs> <laughs> um, I go drum shoe shopping. Like I'm not heading oh, yeah? on. Like I've got a specific pair of wedding band gig shoes that I wear. Oh yeah. Yeah, and they just go in the bag and you know, you know they come out for the gig and then they go back in the bag. Yeah. Do you know what? Dave Weckle was right. It is, isn't it? Do you know? Because see, I've lo- I remember we did, we've done like a few things. We've played like multiple nights at the Barrowlands, and uh, the first time we did it after the first gig, I left my, uh, like my Converse. I kind of wear them to the point where the, the sole comes off, and I left them in the dressing room, being like, "Oh, cool, I'm coming back tonight. I don't need to take these home." And the cleaners like chucked them oh, out. No. I was like, honestly, like I felt like I was going to cry because like <laughs> I like I like to try and get them to last like. An album campaign, and then I'll get like another pair, yeah. and then this was like obviously like I felt like it's kind of like you're well, better than yeah yeah <laughs> do you know like you went, you, it feels like when you're putting like you're not like you've not like got like used to, you want to get used to like a practice space like see wearing like a new pair of Converse for a gig I was like I hated it it was yeah, like it's like pulling out a new pair of sticks from your bag you, uh, you know you've you've got one that's kind of half chewed down yeah, yeah, one yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, in the middle and one with the <laughs> who's this gone. guy these are these are these are these need to get acquainted yeah totally. Oh, yeah. I have to love that people yeah. watching you guys at the Badlands and like, man, drummer looks absolutely furious. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah. yeah. Do I like was, these shoes. I was like, so I was like, the off first, your feet, I, launch them into the crowd. Yeah. I felt so bad. The cleaner was doing her job. They probably because they looked probably like, like they'd been like left in the crowd because they were like wrecked. You know, when they had holes yeah. in them. She yeah. probably thought they were like. So now you label them, right? There, yeah, yeah, yeah. I put them in. A, I put them in like a safe. Travel <laughs> 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 safe. Yeah. <laughs> I I, in my school people used to like they would purposely buy white Converse so that they could like get them signed by yeah, like, yeah, all their yeah. friends I like, did that for, like, 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 like a um, oh. we call it a stooky but like yeah, a, a yeah. cast yeah like. we did that on the last day we would do that on the last day of school your school shirt uh, yeah, oh, yeah, yeah, school yeah. shirt, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, like shoes, shoes. though. Yeah, like, nah, you'd always write on like, them. Cool. cool shoes went around when I was in school. <laughs> like, they definitely had Converse, nope. didn't they? No, no, I'm, I'm nearly 40, man. So it's no. like back in the day, they weren't around. It was like uh, kickers were a massive deal. <laughs> and 
if you wore Asics or Gola, you got beat up. Aye, they, you know, like, <laughs> they kind of come in and out of fashion over I, there. Like, you never know when they're cool or not. I was furious when they were around because I was like, I would like, yeah, yeah. Could real me for that. I know, man. Like, <laughs> totally. You just were like, you were, you were skanky. And stuff. <laughs> it was not a good look, and now everyone's cutting about with them on. I don't know. Do you like when you go is? Uh, no. <laughs> That's <laughs> when you know you're old. Yeah. When the uncoolest thing. I was even like kids started wearing. Bags over two shoulders. That's when I knew I was old. Because yeah, like, was two strapping it. If, if you did that in school, you'd yeah. you'd like you wouldn't have made it to the end of the day. You'd That's have been. It, <laughs> yeah, you would have, yeah, you'd have just uh, you'd have been in a bin. Or, you know, <laughs> bag would have been in a bin or yeah. something. You know, it would have just. Uh, it was horrendous. Your shoes would have been in the bin. Right, much. Yeah, <laughs> too <everything>. soon. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, let's add my bag. <laughs> Why didn't you do your homework? Um, yeah, that's what. If, uh, yeah, fashions are weird like that, man. So, yeah. What you got? You've got quick fire. So you? I do, yeah. So quick I wanted fire. to just kind of like we've because never we've never done this oh, before, yeah, yeah. so I just nice. thought I'd uh, catch you out a little bit. I don't by... do that. I'll, I'll definitely cut out. I'm terrible under pressure. Brilliant. <laughs> Good. That's what we want. So um, I've just listed some quick fire questions. So okay. obviously the idea behind quick fire, as everyone knows, answer as quickly as possible. <laughs> okay. Um, so favorite movie. Memento. Oh. <laughs> It's a deep cut. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a great film. It I've is. never even heard of that. What's oh, that about? It's, it's, I'll let you. No, oh, it's like uh, it's what's it's Christopher Nolan, yep. like the guy right. that like bat like the good Batman movies, uh, or the modern good Batman movies. <laughs> uh, it was like one of his first films, <laughs> yeah, right? It was, eh? And it's like all in reverse, like the scene, not the uh, not actually reverse, but the scenes uh-huh. you see, like the last scene of the movie is the first scene you see, and oh, it works okay. back, and you're tr- it's like kind of like I'm kind of like I'm a guy trying to figure out who killed his wife but you see it from the point of when he's killed the guy right. and it works back but it's like really clever the way they but do it but he's also got oh, yeah. memory loss yeah yeah he's so got... he has to write everything down and then can't trust the memory and yeah. he, he carries Polaroids everywhere super it's cool it's amazing and the yeah. DVD I don't know if you got the DVD I do you can oh, watch it so nerdy you can watch it in linear fashion <laughs> yeah, but it's it. not as good I know it's totally weird it's, it's like it like kind of defeats the purpose yeah. I was like ah oh, because there's, there's like there's like a scene then there's like a scene in black and white yep. and that's kind of like that kind of like ends up tying together with the final scene yeah because so some of it's in colour some of it's in black and white okay. yeah, yeah it's it's amazing I feel like yeah. I've just opened a can of worms yeah. here oh, you it's have. got Carrie Ann Moss and Guy Pearce and Joe Pantoliano in it so it's like ha- like two of the Matrix crew and all that yeah, yeah. wow great so film, good. man deep yeah. cut yeah hey, man. respect <laughs> I'm, I'm going to write that down my mental <laughs> I'll bring it to you oh even better yeah. right. I've got like four of your movies in my life <laughs> Yeah, every time I come in, Chris will be like, "Have you seen this movie?" And like, what the guys have realised since I started working here is I've basically never seen any film ever that's like hip. <laughs> I'm kind like, of the same. I've not seen Star Wars or the Godfather. You've never seen Star Wars. No, nah, I know. So I feel, I feel wow. like. Well, like... some of that's quite good. Like the episodes one through three. <laughs> yeah. Episodes one through three, you've done yourself a favour. Four through like seven. Yeah. I like it. Oh, okay. Um, I'll bring them in for you. <laughs> <laughs> um, top three bands that you're listening to right now. Right now. Um, well, this guy called Alex, and then in brackets Sandy G, which is just it's like it's really lo-fi kind of bedroomy. Right. Uh, this is you know this is just bands I listened to this week. Okay. So weirdly, so REM is one of them. I know they're not a new band, but That's I'm just right. I'm I'm obsessed with them. Like I, I, I don't know, and I really like that Sam Fender album. Like I, that that like which came out on Friday. Oh, That's I've not listened to it yet. Really good. Yeah. Yeah. Good. It's like. It's weird, I thought he was kind of like a pop star guy, but it's like, kind of like Springsteen meets oh, wow. War on Drugs meets The Killers. Oh, it's kind of wow. like, oh, it's kind of like Springsteen and then all the people that are influenced by Springsteen. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But it's, it's really good. What's your favourite album? Really uh, right now, it's probably uh, Reckoning, the second one. Oh, wow, oh, man, man, deep, but but I'm, I'm going through from the from right. the, from the start, okay. so I'm only at... Uh, you got I'm, to green yet? I'm at green. Yeah. That's where I'm at, and I'm, I'm really like green. Yeah. It's good. I've, there's not been a bad one so far. No, there's, there's no fat on any of it. Oh. <sighs> so good. Also, Bill Berry, really good drummer. Hell yeah! I, it's like so like he's pretty like jazzy and stuff. That's or, great, like, man. Yeah, yeah, great. Uh, I didn't. I just never thought he was. I kind of never had no idea clue that. Yeah, it's like he's just. He was just kind of tucked away, mm-hmm. being awesome. Yeah. I don't know, that's how I describe him. Yeah. That's the way of being awesome. Yeah, it's way good. to get to new adventures. It's my favourite. Right, okay. That's so good. Everyone, that's thing, everyone seems to have their own, so that's well, kind of a good thing. The whole thing it. with new adventures was they recorded the song at Soundcheck on every gig of the tour. Oh, that's it's cool. effectively a live album, but it's not. Because you, but you can hear it. You can hear that it's not in the, it's not a studio album in, in the same respect. So it's oh, all cool. one take. 
No way. Yeah. Chris doing. actually has new adventures tattooed across his chest. Do you actually? <laughs> <laughs> Tomorrow we will be. Yeah, cool, t- cool tattoo. Um, and one more. Oh no, Sam Finner, you said it. I said it, I got it. Um, so if you could play for any band at all, play drums for any band, mm-hmm. like past or present, who yeah. would you play for? Uh, I think do you know what, I'd probably go from it purely from an enjoyable like enjoyment in, in the songs. I'd I probably would pick like Foo Fighters just because like they were all the songs right. I liked gr- growing up, and I think as like a two hour show that would just be such a fun like like set to play as yeah, a drummer. Yeah. I've never seen them. The like, so the first gig I went, I went to was oh, Foo Fighters. Yeah, uh, yeah. Where was it? Uh, Battlelands. Oh, wow, uh, I feel like that would be the greatest gig of all time. Yeah, it was it was amazing. Uh, you know, funnily enough, when we were talking about Bella Houston, the week prior, Foo Fighters were playing. Did you go? Uh, I went, yeah, and I, it was amazing. Uh, was it? Ta- I assume it was Taylor playing. Yeah yeah, 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 yeah. It was. He was. I, I think he, he probably wasn't in the band. I, I think it was when There's Nothing Left to Lose came out. So he'd have been. It was the first album he'd like played on. I think because I think that's the third album, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Think yeah. Colour in the Shape. He, yeah, he, he played on. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And so we recorded with Gil Norton. No, these aren't. These have, have not become quick fire. Oh, that's like, fine. That's <laughs> like, that's <laughs> the intention. Uh, <laughs> we uh, we recorded with Gil Norton, who did the curling and shape, oh. and he just like he was just like basically like they did ever long over Christmas or something, and Dave did like that drum take in like one go. Of course and it's like one of the like my still like one of my favorite oh, like man. songs to play drums too. So that's great. Yeah, and we could, but that was the problem. It was meant to be William. Goldsmith or whatever right, and I think yeah. Dave just happened to do it and was like oh yeah. that's amazing yeah. <laughs> and they didn't get on I don't think they did I, I don't think, think so pretty well documented that they didn't really see eye to eye yeah because in, in their documentary like they talk about it as yeah, well because they get them both in for the documentary and together yeah, no, yeah. Not in the same room, like, but like, it's kind of cool that he's still in it like all the guys that eventually get kicked out are all still in that documentary which oh, that's cool. so yeah. But they don't seem really happy, but they're still in it. Do you know yeah, what I mean? <laughs> yeah. I think the guy who I can't Fran Stow, the other guy they got. Fran Stow, yeah, that's him, guy. yeah, the guitarist. Um he was more okay with it because I think when Foo Fighters did like a like a really small intimate show, like his band opened up for them and uh, that's that. so cool. I think they're still cool, but right. like yeah, an yeah, olive branch. The, the, yeah. <laughs> drummer thing, the drummer feud thing was fairly because I think Dave was a better player too. I think he was getting to the stage where he couldn't, the guy couldn't quite play what he wanted to. I don't know. I'd, I'd, I still think, in my opinion, I still think Dave's a better drummer. Like I, I when, when you see them live, not I'm no that like Taylor Taylor Hawkins unreal, but see when you when I watch like they sometimes Dave Grogo and drums for like they did they used to do like a Queen. Yeah. Well, like a, actually, funnily enough, they did that at Bella Houston and they did it as like their all their band intros. Ah, uh, um, that's cool. And they all like when Dave went round everyone individually went round Nate and they just played a little bit. Um, they played uh, Good Times. Oh, okay. yeah, yeah. And um, when they got to Pat Smear and they uh, played a Chili Pepper song because apparently uh, Pat, in between being the Foo Fighters, was offered to join the Chili oh, Peppers. no way! And he was like, "Can you imagine like Pat Smear in a funk band?" Like, and then they <laughs> played into that, and it was cool. And then Taylor and Dave switched, and so Dave went on the kit, and they done Under Pressure. Right. Um, and right at the, like the very end of it, uh, Taylor turned around and was like, "Ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Dave Grohl." And I swear to you, Craig, <laughs> like on my mother's <laughs> life, he played the starting riff to Smells Like Teen Spirit. The Brudden, the Brudden. Someone told me this, yeah, yeah. But then he like doesn't go in. He, the, did, uh, he, he <laughs> didn't do the song, right? And it's honestly, right, I, I, I'm maybe like over fanboying here, but this even the sound was yeah, yeah. perfect. Oh, yeah, It yeah. sounded like the record. The yeah. Brudden, the Brudden, the Brudden. And everyone just went, Whoa! He's and meant then, to have like it. perfect cadence on the drums, Dave, bro. Like his... Is like consistency in terms of like, Back the, that, yeah. It yeah. just apparently it's just like insane, like more than anyone in terms of if you look at like this, the, like the WAV file yeah. and stuff, it's just like it hits the same point. It's not like man, that skill is just you don't spend your life learning. Uh, yeah, I don't think he had to learn. I think that's nah, just one of the things you just you can't had. teach that kind of stuff. Yeah, no, he's, he's, yeah, he's, he's pretty amazing. Yeah, uh, phenomenal. So I'd pick, I'd pick the Foo Fighters. Good call. <laughs> Good call. They were awesome as well. They opened with um, at Bell Houston. They opened with Stacked Actors, which like they'd not played in like yeah, yeah. years. And when I saw them, they did that and they added, they add on like a big section in the middle. I don't know if they still do, but they used to do. That was and first time, first time I saw them they just played it. But then I saw them at SCCC and they did like they do like a big kind of 
jam thing in the middle of it. it was yeah, super they cool did win. that. Yeah, yeah, good song. They all played Johnny Park as well. They played Hey Johnny Park. Yeah, like, great song, man. Yeah, like, deep cuts. Yeah, yeah man. <laughs> yeah, that's your like, yeah, the phrase of this yeah, podcast that's is that's deep that's cuts. Yeah, that's a good one. Um, because they went straight from Stack Tactors into the Pretender, in which everyone yes. absolutely lost it. Yeah, yeah. I like there was a like guy. Like they more or less meddled the two oh, like yeah. a little bit, so it was like going crazy at stack tactics and then <laughs> obviously that's the worst guitar in the world. But um, I bet we needed it. You should have seen it. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, and there was a guy in front of me who like I'm not a tall person by any means, but he, mm-hmm. this guy must have been like eight foot tall and he had really really long hair. And every time he went to headbang, like his hair would go in my mouth. It was it was a full ordeal. So, <laughs> did you climb his hair? A little bit. Yeah. yeah. I saw, I saw, I had to see the man somehow. At REM, um, this has gone full circle. There was a girl got on top of her boyfriend's shoulders, and some guy just pulled her ponytail and pulled her right off. Ooh. <laughs> yeah, savage. This, this isn't is. part of the quick fire, but I'm curious. What's off the back of that? What's the craziest thing you've seen at a twin show? A twin show? Uh, well. The darkest thing that happened is when we were in America, we the we our first American headline tour, playing a place called Bend, Oregon, mm-hmm. and uh, it was going really well because like it, it's like we weren't like by no means we're playing to like big crowds, but this was the first show. It was like kind of like packed. And I'm like this is amazing, and uh, a guy in the front row just like three Sundays just turned around, turned around and like punched a woman in the face, Whoa. and the gig was just like totally ruined. That was really the craziest thing, just in, in more of a like. Oh my god! How well, how has this happened at one of our shows? Uh, and the guy was just like, like no remorse. Did security uh, launch him? There was no security, <laughs> so oh. so it was kind of oh. like it was kind of like trial by the crowd, and they were like, they got he got like hauled outside. I don't know. Yeah. That's the the craziest nice thing we used to have. This guy we played this festival two thousand trees, and the first time we did it, this guy came up in like a like a kind of big horse's head thing. No, not horse's head. That is another thing I haven't, but a guy came up in like a chicken suit and then he just like appear like at gigs down that and he would just always like somehow manage to find his way on stage. So like there was like three or four years of just all this guy like in Southampton, oh, oh. this guy in a chicken costume, but then he just stopped coming. I don't know. I don't know if he got too old to be wearing chicken costumes. He got plucked away. <laughs> yeah. Have you seen the YouTube clip of the, the legend Dave Grohl launching a guy out for fighting? No. It's at the iTunes Festival like yeah, 2011 or something. Band. Nice. Kicks a guy out. I love that. Like, it's amazing. It's great. Right. Just, if that happens, man, you should get Sammy kick about. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Scottish guy, like mate. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. Also, have you seen the video of Dave Grohl playing for Nirvana when Kurt Cobain gets like uh, gets attacked by a bouncer and Dave Grohl just like launches off the drums? <laughs> no. <laughs> and this is when he's like a pure like stick. Yeah. If you know what I mean? But it's like so cool. Just like they're playing like. Uh, that uh, love buzz song and he, he just like stops and you see him like sprint at this guy wow. it's wow. cool it's really cool oh, yeah man yep. next quick this is, this is a proper like Dave Grohl loving yeah. and I love it <laughs> um, yeah so like you were about to tell a story about um, what was it the horse's head was that a oh that was, just, that was just another guy came on stage with a horse's head and, like uh, a real one uh, no, okay. just like like it's a rubber. I think it was like a rubber one. <laughs> that would have been that have been darker than. Or, like Aussie or, uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah. A severed horse's head. No, thankfully not. <laughs> have but, you not seen the Godfather? Yeah, <laughs> I've, I've I've not, but I know, yeah. I know, yeah. and I I think I know just uh, yeah. because it's like in someone's bed, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. he won't make a deal with the Godfather, so yeah. he makes him an That's when you go back to the tour bus at night. Ah! Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> for the shop. <laughs> Completely switching gears. Favorite biscuit. Favourite biscuit? Uh, nowadays, when it grew up, it was like a gold bar. Do you know those ones oh, that you always, yeah, always had in your yeah. grand's house? Yeah, uh, but now it's a hobnob. I'm vegan, so that's pretty much as good as it gets. Oh, if you're, vegan. Yeah, so that's pretty much all you can have if you're vegan. Where's, <laughs> if where's you're, the best vegan place in Glasgow? Uh, I would say there's a place called The 78 in Finiston. Oh, yeah, yeah. I like I like there, or... In Finiston Zell, there's a place called Maze, which is like a cafe. The last time I was in Finiston, we were with Johnny Scott. Ah, oh, yeah, nice. Yeah. He's a Lud- is he not a Ludwig guy? He's he a is Lud- a big Ludwig guy, yeah. Adam did a rig rundown when he played the hydro with the churches. He went, like, so we do... <laughs> <laughs> with the churches? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> well, sorry, with churches. Ha, 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 sorry. We'll need to do this for you, actually. The next yeah, time yeah. We're in Glasgow, Adam uh, goes and films... Like mm-hmm. the gig or the rig he's playing, and Johnny talked through it, and yeah, man, definitely all that stuff. So, we Johnny was really kind and, and hooked us up for a, a night at the gig, and we went and hung with him for a bit because yeah, Johnny's nice. been like you 
uh, Johnny's been a long time customer here. Yeah. You know, do you know him? Do you know Johnny? Do you know? I don't know him that well, but I just, I just, I used to like, like take a one for a walk week and stuff like oh, that. Yeah. So I've always just loved his bands, and he like, I was just like, that guy looks super cool, and he yeah, plays drums really yeah, cool. So yeah. I was like, I was always just, um, uh, I've just kind of known of his work, but yeah. I don't really know him that great. He's but. a monster, and it's great to see him on a gig like that. I know. It's I like was. I kind of feel. guy that deserves it. It's Johnny, man. Totally. I kind of. You also just knew the minute they were going to get a real drummer, it was. It was always going to be yeah. him, man. He's yeah. like. He's kind of paid his dues, didn't he? Like, very much has. Yeah. Like, he very, and he was awesome, wasn't he? Yeah, he was cool. I'm man. not. I do you know. I've not. I've only seen churches. But like when it was just the three of them, yeah. and is I imagine it's way better. Yeah. Meteoric rise. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It yeah, yeah. brings a whole different energy to the yeah, band, man. Yeah. It's it brilliant. And he's playing like eighty sevens pads, like proper eighty oh, yeah, sevens yeah. things. Do but they still work? I imagine. Uh, he's got two rigs that apparently both work. Yeah. Really? No way. Um, he was telling me. Um, it's in the video as well. Like he's saying like they look amazing, but they're absolutely horrific to play because <laughs> they just have like no rebound I just and, like, like in a wall yeah it totally yeah. is it's like basically and they were saying like oh when I first got these out I was like this is a great idea I'm gonna look so cool and then like after one song of using them it was like total <laughs> wrist was just on fire yeah <laughs> <Carpal tunnel. laughs> Um, strangest thing you've ever eaten strangest thing I've ever eaten Uh, see I'm like I'm like so fussy with food so I'm like not one of those guys like anything weird I'm just like no I don't want to try it so I don't know I'm not really a gold bar a gold bar <laughs> gold bar is probably the weirdest thing I think yeah. I, don't, I don't know if you, do you get them outside of Scotland are they Scotland centric I, I don't even know how you'd, how you'd describe it it's like taste to me like gold yeah. <laughs> I don't know what the, the flavour is they're amazing like, yeah. um, I am gonna let I'm gonna go to the toilet this is I've never been to the toilet <laughs> before the podcast. First time. so I'm gonna let you guys do this and then I'll figure out on the road back where you get gold bars so <laughs> okay, okay, right, okay. as long as you come back with gold bars <laughs> oh, then sorry. Well, he's vegan though, so. I know I just I could just look at them maybe they're vegan I don't think so we need to look into it right? yeah, 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 <laughs> get me a pet now <laughs> um, so tea or coffee 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 oh, have always. you been a big coffee drinker or uh, I used to, not until I was like I think no and then I started going with a girl, uh, so still my girlfriend, and she loved it. So I kind of felt like I was going to all these coffee shops with her and was just like, suppose I should try it and kind of did the usual thing where I like, used to get the ones that are like desserts. Oh, yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like not, there's like a bit of coffee, but it's mainly like yeah. cream. I, I remember very vividly uh, with my friends, we would go to like Starbucks <laughs> and it's like, can I get like a salted caramel frappuccino <laughs> with like extra whipped cream and all that? And it's like, yeah, there's yeah. like not even there's coffee the, in that, man. Like, it's more kidding yourself. You're like, I'm having a coffee, but you're just having like a thousand calorie pretty dessert. Much, uh, like milkshake, yeah. Totally. But now just have black. Just black coffee? Just black coffee, yeah. 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 Uh, I actually noticed my teeth are getting like really, both, like are changing color by, by like every six months. I'm like, ah, oh, I forgot what that happens. I just, it. I actually the other day, I because I'm a big fan of like going to like little independent coffee shops now. Mm-hmm. Um, I bought myself like a milk frother. Kind of oh, right, yeah, so yeah. like so I can make like proper like home style like barista style lattes. Does it work? It uh, mm, kind of. I'm getting there. I'm getting there. I'm still trying to work out how to do like the whole like love heart and the. the oh yeah, the that's like art, that to me. Thing. Anyone that can do that, I'm just like that's like. The biggest skill, no, I do like to me. I'm like, how do you do that? I've seen people like put like the little clover and like pints of Guinness. I'm like, oh, I've that. never seen that before. Man. Yeah, that's super cool. I don't know. I think it's uh, I mean, it's totally pointless, but it's dead cool. Yeah, <laughs> when you see it, like, it's like it, make, it makes no added additional taste. Uh, yeah, but, like you know, where are the gold bars? The McVitie's make them. Ah, so they're so, probably UK based. Yeah, I think Fender had the distribution for America, so <laughs> it kind of fell out. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> uh, I don't, uh, but yeah, they are they are a British uh, a British biscuit. So there you go. There you go. Only sold exclusively to grands. You have to be <laughs> yeah. over sixty to oh, buy them. <laughs> oh, Man. that's good as well. Yeah. Did you know? Do you know the biscuit breakaway? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Do you know you can get breakaway that has caramel like? On caramel? it, like caramel, caramel, <laughs> caramel, caramel. <laughs> uh, caramel. Oh right. Ah. Um, so it's like you know how like the chocolate oh, is yeah, just replaced yeah. with caramel. Jeez. I mean, Fox's good. classic is the answer to the question. That is good. I've I, that, that's another grand biscuit. Like that's that's a, grand yeah, biscuit, but... that is good. I don't know what that. It's got like a. It's got like a unique flavour inside. Yes. I don't know. It's, that is good. I See. may have opened a can of worms here, but another can of worms. There's, I've just got several cans. Just <laughs> up. Um, Jaffa cake, cake or biscuit? biscuit. No, cake, cake. I think it's cake. a cake. I, I can't believe I just said biscuit. Cake. It was like a, you were thinking about biscuits. I was. Uh, I'd say it's a cake it's as in well. The cake aisle. Is it? Is, I see, it's in the biscuit aisle. Is it? Yeah, it's and in that's both. That is. I reckon they put them in both because I reckon it's 50 50. Are people going one to like. Doubling one. up on the sales. Yeah. I think it's a cake though. Me too. It's in the name. 
I just, I just love it. <laughs> yeah. Just thinking right now, I love like if someone's clicked on this right now and be like, oh, man, I can't wait for this to get really in depth drum near do <laughs> halfway through. We're like, so breakaway, right? <laughs> I mean, we bar. went deep with Greg. <laughs> yeah, and, and uh, yeah. Like, sweet rides and stuff. I'd argue we've went deeper with <laughs> book. <laughs> <laughs> um, in a zombie apocalypse, what would your weapon of choice be? Uh, you can blame Google for these questions, by the way. <laughs> yeah, you could, you could, de- I could do some real damage. 14 if you inch rectum. Frisbee it towards someone. <laughs> uh, I don't know, I'd want something you don't have to get up close. Like, probably, like, I mean, can you use like a, like a, like a sure. rocket launcher or something? I mean, it's, it's up to you. Yeah, it's that seems problem, like, man. yeah, I'll go for a rocket launcher. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Obliterated. Yeah, 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 yeah. Have you seen that movie, Battle Royale, the Japanese movie? I have, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's like, amazing. Love that movie. That's yeah, great. It's like imagine like that, but like Elon Musk made a flamethrower. Oh yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. He's got a company that's it's like not as separate from like it's like Tesla. It's got like a funny name. It's called like the Pointless Company or yeah, something. Kind of... he, he claims it's not a flamethrower, but it's a flamethrower. <laughs> it's <laughs> yeah. like basically because I think if he calls it a flamethrower, he can't sell it or something. There's something weird like uh, yeah. around what it's got called. But yeah, he has a flamethrower. It's like meant for like lighting barbecues or something. Something like that. <laughs> I don't know, but. Just I reckon it would take names though. <laughs> yeah. 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 <laughs> um, I've totally lost the thread of where we were at. Uh, yeah. Um, so, what's your current Netflix binge or like streaming what's in binge? That thing? What's it called? Mind Hunter. Oh, it's amazing. It was really good. I really like I that. Finished it. I need to go on the Mind Hunter train. Uh, man. it's good. I, it's kind of a slow burner. It's, like, it's season one is still the the the, the it's the best season. But really? it's, uh, yeah. I'm only halfway through season one. But oh, you're on season one. Yeah, yeah. Oh, so I'm, I'm a wee bit jealous because uh, you've never watched Mindhunter. No, it's and good. Neither is Adam, so no. I'll never watch it for the first. I like time. the. Uh, I like that. Is his name Bill Tench? Yeah, yeah. he's great in season two as well. Is he? He's yeah, cool. Season two is a wee bit more focused on him. Is it good? Yeah. I like him. Uh, yeah, season one's like awesome. Uh, it's really good. Do you guys like it. on tour? Like, do you guys have like a band like binge? We like, like now not. Yeah, I remember the only one I can really remember is like like Breaking Bad, just because it was like uh, kind of yes. felt like an event. I remember we always like watched that together. Uh, not really. We kind of all do our own thing, and we're like Sam watches tons of stuff on Netflix. I'm on 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 tour. I don't. I try to like read books, but I'm really bad at it. But I kind of feel like oh, I should use that for reading. Mm-hmm. But I'm yeah. I'm terrible at it. I just yeah. end up like. After like after a gig, I'm like just got no concentration for any of that stuff. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I go to sleep. How do you find that? I was just thinking there, like when you're leaving between gigs, like how do you find that being vegan? Like, do you find anywhere to eat? Because I, I imagine it must be pretty challenging. Sometimes. It depends where you go. UK is amazing. So easy yeah. in the UK now. I think maybe just. I also have only. I was vegetarian for years. So I've only been vegan for like a short time, like oh, a right, year okay. or so, yeah. and I feel like I've done it at the time where. It's become yeah, like it's a kind of buzzy yeah. thing. So it's in the UK, it's fine. I remember when we went to, like going to America at first, uh, Ross and the band's been like vegetarian his whole life. Mm-hmm. And then, I remember that just looked like painful for him the first couple of days. Like, more, not like just more when you got to like the middle of America, there was just some places mm-hmm. that just yeah. genuinely just didn't know what it was. <laughs> if you know what I mean, like, what do you mean? Yeah, <laughs> like, you <eat> <laughs> yeah, yeah, they just couldn't understand. You don't eat yeah, they were just like, I would like, but you'll eat like chicken. And they're like, no, 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 like none of that stuff. And he's like, you must eat like beef though. <laughs> they just honestly just couldn't get, like, they couldn't understand. Wow. Yeah. I remember Pretty being weird. in New York and not eating a vegetable for like four days. <laughs> it's just like, like, because the, you know, you go, even a salad at the restaurant I was at was just like pitiful, you know, just. Like, uh, yeah, yeah, there's. And there's no farms around. Like, it's just all shipped in. It's just, yeah, yeah. Oh, man, this is weird. French fries with everything. Yeah, like, totally. That's good though. I can get down oh, yeah, with that. Yeah. <laughs> I can get down <laughs> with that. Is tomato sauce vegan? It is. Or you can get to it vegan is. tomato sauce. Uh, like, well, it is. Heinz, the, oh. the classic is vegan. Really? It is. is. Oh. Yeah. So it's. Do you know what? I'm not massively into it though. Right. Now, I used to love it. I think I, lo- I had so much of it as a little guy yeah. that now I think I've like burned out on it. And now I'll put it still on. Nah, I, don't, I, don't, I hardly ever. My girlfriend is like obsessed with it oh, to really? like. Just put it on sandwiches? Pff, uh, everything. Right. Like, stuff you shouldn't put it on. <laughs> Mints? <laughs> yeah. Like, <laughs> based, like <laughs> bananas. Do <laughs> <laughs> yeah. you warm up? I don't really, but I sh- probably should. I, I've never... Like, nine but, minute shows, too, actually? Yeah, but see, because we don't have any bits that are super technical, and there's not, like, bits that yeah, I... you're slamming. Yeah, but I, th- I kind of feel... I don't know, I've always felt like... See, I also... Uh, 
you know a lot of people warm up with heavier sticks so then yeah. you're I, I want the opposite mm-hmm. effect I, want, I like the sticks to feel like heavier oh wow so I kind of don't oh. like to I don't I, I like to when I go on the drums to feel heavy I, I feel like I warm up the, when I like when I go out to play then the drumsticks don't feel weighty enough oh, you know what oh, I mean wow. so I could probably just warm up with lighter sticks that would probably be like an idea but I, do you know what I'm just lazy at it and, and you've never had injury uh, yes, I have a, I have a pretty recurrent thing with my left wrist, right. which is probably caused by. Pattern, uh, it always happens. See, before we go on tour, we we'll always like do like pre production days where we'll play the set like two or three times, and it always happens there. I think it's just, I get it's like three like hours in. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like gig, gig shape and rehearsal shape are very different things, eh? Totally. Like and, uh, if you're giving it the, the the stage energy, that's a different vibe. Yeah, yeah, uh, <clears throat> and then. Uh, yeah, I, I just have to wear like a wrist guard when it happens and right. eventually it goes away, but I should yeah. probably, I'm, I'm sure that's not good to just keep letting it happen. <laughs> yeah, check it out. I know, that I know. Like, yeah. I know, it's the thing, you kind of take it for granted. Maker. I know, see if I, like, like if that happens, there's guys that have to yeah. stop playing. Tom, like, Thomas Lang had carpal tunnel in both his hands. <laughs> had to get the operation stuff. Mm-hmm. I read the article scary. about that the other day, yeah, man. It's, it's like, whoa. Savage, yeah. like, Can he... St- can he still play to like yeah, the same degree now? Or? He, he can't play. He used to, Thomas Lang was famous for playing traditional grip, but like ah. crazy. But then he had to just completely stop using. Yeah, it. I'd really? vowed to never do it again. Yeah, like I, mean, <laughs> I think he fell out with traditional grip. Yeah. But obviously, hard. <laughs> <laughs> I don't like you. <laughs> but yeah, he can still be Thomas Lang. You know? I know. I know. I guess if you're at that level, you're still even if you lose ten percent, most people are not going to notice. Yeah, so <laughs> most people yeah. don't have the ten percent that you've just lost. I don't. I know. I know. I. Th- I, th- I had. I, that was the first drum DVD I got. Like the is it creative control? Yeah, I think it exploded everyone's brains. I know. I, I, it was to me. It was just too, too far ahead of like what I was capable of. It was like <laughs> kind of waste on me. I like that Jojo Mir one. That yeah, was for Secret I like, weapons. Yeah, yeah I like great. that. God, remember when drum DVDs were a thing? I know, Hudson Music. Yeah, they must totally. have made a mint. Because they were, buy them. They were like 30 quid or something. Yeah, I had fun. I think we still got some of Chris Coleman's upstairs. Yeah, we might do. We might do. No, who buys it? No one buys DVDs. Well, Hudson went digital, didn't they? Ah, right. It's yeah, just like so you just it's download. Just all it. downloads now. So nice. You know, smart and I guess, to move with it. I guess we like Drumio and things like that yeah. being so widely available. Do you do any of that stuff? Like no, no. Like uh, I've like watched like some of their videos. Like I like watching that stuff, but I've I've never really done. I think I'm just like my approach to drumming is so basic. I just think I would feel kind of out of my comfort zone because right. I just feel like. I, I just like hit them hard. Drum, <laughs> drum hangs on on festivals and stuff. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like drums uh, hanging. Yeah, I do you know. I love talking about drums, but I'm not super technical. So like, uh, I'm more just like I like talking about drum kits. Yeah. <laughs> like, do, do, do you buy in the vintage thing? Uh, do you know what? See, do you see, just because like with vintage stuff, I think I would just abuse it. Like, <laughs> although I like I love all like I love like. I played like a Slingerland kit once in America right. and thought it was amazing. But well, the CC thing's kind of down now. Yeah, 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 yeah. They've gone even more. Like I think when I when I had my that CC kit at first, mm-hmm. it was before they were making their own shells. It was like the Keller shells. Keller shells, yeah. Um, but yeah, like I guess they are kind of made in that kind of fashion. It's yeah. and I think now the the guys, the main guys that are playing CNC are after that kind of vintage yeah. thing. They're not. Totally yeah, because they're not like CNC aren't super big with like the kind of like rock stuff now that's more like SGC if you're yeah. going or, or like Truth if you're going like the kind of God, like truth, custom I think they're still a company aren't they I Truth think so. I think so. they were big for a while yeah. Yeah. Well, Van's Warped Tour was a yeah. for all those <laughs> yeah. yeah it was like SGC Truth all that Do you kind of think thing. aren't OCDP only making drums for Travis or something I feel like when I was so when I was growing up that was they were huge man because yeah. Travis played them but don't like Taylor played Taylor Rogers played them for a little while as well um, you heard of Q drums yeah, I know the guy from Q Drums. Oh, you know, yeah, him? yeah, oh, yeah. Cool. He's really nice. Yeah. Um, he, he, do you know, they make like the big like steel drums and yeah. stuff. Like yeah. That. Um, so, do you know Elan Rubin, the drummer? Uh, I know him because we played we played like gigs with Lost Profits back in the day when he was playing for them. Oh wow! Uh, cool. Back like when we're not allowed to speak about them anymore. But <laughs> was it, like, that would have yeah. been like about two thousand. Eight, I think it maybe or seven like or two thousand. Yeah, we played with a couple of shows with him when he was playing with him. He's awesome. He's like. a monster. I his work with Paramore specifically uh, on their self titled album is just every time I listen to it, I can't, I can't not listen to that album and not enjoy yeah, like yeah. at least the drum performance. You know, so good. He does. Uh, is he not? Is he 
back with Nine Inch Nails, I think. He is, yeah. yeah. And uh, mm-hmm. he does as he does these reverb videos now. I don't know if you've seen. He does like I've seen a couple instructions. Of them. They're cool. It's just cool watching him play drums because yeah. like the open yeah. hand thing. It's yeah, just yeah, like yeah. I always think that just looks so cool. Kate Yeti's drummer plays them as well. Yeah, Adam Marcello. Q. Q. Yeah, he does. Yeah. 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 Uh, the guy owns it. Are we? Uh, there was a band that toured with us over here called Dead Seda that we went to meet them in LA and uh, he was there. Right. Like, and this, he was a super nice guy. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I think the He's OCDP loving. guy was, was he not Travis's tech? Yeah, 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 yeah. Not how that went. I, I met him when well, we did those shows with Blink. We met him. Really nice guy. I listened to the Mike Johnston episode of the Craig Reynolds podcast. <laughs> Down week. And they talk about seeing Travis. Mm-hmm. And he was doing that sh- that tour. Without any monitors, yeah. Or oh, what? Like, yeah, so he, he the band weren't on ears, so he, he just counted the band off. Seriously, and knows the songs inside out so well, and he has he has a machine yeah. that he did the, all that festival tour without any monitors. That's so cool. It was like Taylor Hawkins, Mike Johnson, and a couple other guys were just like, Mike had just come off stage and was going away, and they were all like, "Dude, come with us. We're going to see Blink." And they're like, "He's like, really? You guys are going to watch the Blink guy?" <laughs> and then he watched it. And was like. Man, uh, he's it, a monster. It's mm-hmm. just like it's the consistency he yeah. gets, like for playing at that speed and stuff like that. Like I'm yeah. not like massively into like pop punk, but uh, he's just like a he's like he is like the band though. If you take yeah. him out of Blink yeah. One Eight Two, they're like they would. I feel like they would they would not be a good band. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? It's like yeah. he's he's kind of like it's, like a, it's a telling thing. sign that like people who don't even play music know who Travis Barker yeah, is. Yeah, yeah, he's like know. kind of uh, he's kind of gone. It wouldn't be he like also just like. He's the real deal when he like when we were doing that those shows with them, he rehearses for like ninety minutes before the gig, like right. properly just plays the drums and yeah. then goes out and plays another ninety minutes. Yeah, and just crazy. It's, yeah. And it's you cool. can totally like there's the there's a the kind of pre trink eh, pre Travis Blink and then end up with the state. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, yeah. I just yeah. It, it's because he plays them for Blink because the songs are I guess relatively simple. That kind of becomes like kind of like the lead yeah. guitar. Do you know what I mean? It's yeah. like so cool. Yeah, yeah. There's a really cool was it a podcast or a documentary thing I watched, and it was like he was talking about how they basically when they made Enemy of the State, they were getting really frustrated with him, until I think it was Tom DeLonge was just like, just do what you like. And he's like, ah, and just <laughs> like, <laughs> went on in his head was just like, okay, game on, man. That's so cool. And then just totally changed how the the band went. You know that album's still great. The drumming on that album's amazing. Amazing. Yeah. It's just like. He's just always good. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah, his rudiments are insane. Yeah. yeah man. I'd love to hear him just do like a full rock band thing because I know he does like like lots of hip hop stuff. I'd love to see him. I'd love to see him do like a Foo Fighters thing. Just, I know like there's oh, b- cool. bits of like blank and stuff that's rocky, like yeah. just like a rock, but I'd love to yeah. hear just like a full album just to see what he would yeah, do on it. You know what I mean? Yeah. Sure, would be good. So, when was it you guys toured with Blink? We did two tours. We did one in 2010. And right. then one in 2012. What was that like, man? That must have been... Amazing. The first one, not great. Like, I felt like Blink didn't really want to be there. It was, like, the first shows they'd done back since they were, like, on hiatus. And they oh. looked like they we were, like, kind of phoning it in. Yeah. And mm-hmm. then we did one two years later, and it was amazing. It looked like they, like, well, wanted to be there. Uh, so yeah. so it found was, the love for it again. Yeah. Good, really nice guys. We've done, we know them relatively well. And we did, we toured with Angels and Airwaves. Oh, in wow. Europe once as well. Yeah. Really, they're they're all like Tom's really nice and I they're all just really nice guys. Yeah, kind of they they're all kind of individual like they their families tour with them and stuff. Right. So it's kind of they're just they seem like be a pretty nice way to tour. Yeah, <laughs> you know? for sure. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Travis drives everywhere. Eh? Yeah, he, he gets he gets out. he gets like a boat like yeah. like takes like a month or something. Yeah, to come. because <laughs> of the DJ AM thing, the air crash and all that. He does. Feel it's fair enough. Yeah, totally <laughs> yeah. Enough, yeah. Yeah. And he takes his daughter and son out with him. Like there's videos of his daughter on stage. With yeah, yeah. He was on that tour. We did. He just they just sit and like Amazing. there's there's best for like. They're like just kind of walking about the stage and you're like it's kind of cool because it's like it's not like. Anyone's trying to like stop them, it's not you know, it's, it's yeah. kind of like mm-hmm. adds to it's the show, maybe. yeah, it's cool. And this is what I kind of I found really interesting going back to like Foo Fighters because Dave Grohl's daughter Violet was like she was a backing singer at, ah, at the gig, that's and cool. he was like, Man, like, so this is her last tour before she has to go back and like <laughs> go to school. I'm like, Man, like, her summers and my summers were <laughs> yeah. entirely different, like, yeah. um, but yeah. Sam had his, his uh, yeah. new baby on stage as well, didn't yeah. he? Yeah, she slept through the whole thing. <laughs> I, mean, I don't know if that's I'm like, are we like that boring? <laughs> a baby, like, we didn't start a baby, yeah. It's uh, Ross has got uh, uh, like a 
three-year-old girl, so like, yeah, it's like there's like there's lots of little kids on stage now. Yeah, 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 it's it's yeah. nice. Like when you're, we well, usually in classical shows now, the festival ones at least we'll get our families to like watch side the stage. Yeah, uh, so it's nice. It's kind of yeah. cool. Like, Payback. yeah, I mean, I think all they could hear is me though, because we don't have <laughs> we don't have any monitors on stage, yeah. so it's just like it'll just be like drums. Yeah, it's which is all you want to hear. Surely, yeah, of course. It, yeah. yeah. That's it. Oh, we want to hear. <laughs> yeah, totally. <laughs> yeah. I guess that's quite cool as well. Like when you look at kind of to bring the whole conversation a bit full circle. Like when you look at Vivarium being out like ten years ago, mm-hmm. it's like look how much the bands evolved not only musically but like as people. As yeah, well. yeah, I know. It's weird. I guess it's just if you're in a band, just naturally you just know each other. Like have been through so much together. It's like you do get kind of like. I know them like better than my family. It's weird. Yeah. So yeah, it's it's still strange to think. Jeez. Mm-hmm. Those guys have got like kids now. They're yeah. all, they're all married and stuff. So it's like uh, so funny. I think because you live in a bubble in a band, you don't really think about the years going by. So to in, in my head, it's like I can't believe like like yeah, the yeah. Variums ten years old. You know, like those things. Like it mm-hmm. just like I it just kind of feels like yesterday a little totally, bit. Totally, yeah. Because you're kind of constantly just doing. It's not like you've really ever taken a break, so you're kind of not yeah. really thinking and back. Your years probably planned out, eh? like. You'll, uh, yeah, yeah. Cyclical, so you'll know how long you've got before you start the next one, and mm-hmm. then record and like and rehearsing, tracking, all that. Stuff. Yeah, yeah. You know when the tour cycle will start. Yeah, or, yeah. So it kind of I know you get you're in the rhythm of it, and then yeah. I don't know. It's it's weird. I can't believe that is that is the more thing. I'm like, can't believe we've got kids. They used to like <laughs> Sam used to not be able to like I don't know close a door <laughs> whenever. <laughs> so right. yeah. Okay. Well, uh, where can everybody find the band? You know, like on all, uh, you'll yeah. be on all the socials. Oh, all the socials were, were all like, uh, I guess I think, I think it's just the band's name. Right. <laughs> I guess it's Twilight Atlantic, no spaces on everything. Right. So yeah, I think we're all. And what about yourself, Craig? Have you got any platforms people can follow you? I'm on just, or? I'm just on Instagram. <laughs> I'm just, I'm just, I basically just use it. I'm like so bad at promoting myself and anything other than <laughs> I just like to stick photos up online. Yeah, so quite right, man. Uh, yeah. So I think that's Instagram. quite cool. Like kind of humanizes you in a way yeah you know. uh, yeah I guess so I just I think I'm just like I've got like like in our band Sam is very good at talking us up he's not modest and I'm like <laughs> super modest but I think it's uh, yeah and I'm not very uh, I would be I think I'd just if I put something up about myself I'd instantly just want to like crawl into a bowl yeah yeah yeah. <laughs> so man well thank you so much for coming in thanks, thanks very much for having me it was uh, good fun yeah for sure um, and we will see you probably at the UK drum show. Are you going to be around that weekend? I'm just going on the Saturday. Right, just going on the Saturday. Are you, coming, are you going home on the Saturday night? I'm going home on the Saturday. Ah, okay, because yeah. we'd have caught you for a beer, but ah, okay. Uh, I was going to say I can give you a lift. Oh, <laughs> Funny enough, I'm also driving back on Saturday night. Oh, as well. uh, yeah. nice. So, so I'm not. I'm going home on the Sunday. Oh, oh, nice. You're, you're Car doing drums. The, f- <laughs> the full slog. Yeah. Cool man. Well, thank you so much. Thanks, thanks for having me. Yeah, yeah. Cheers. Bye.